Hey every year. How you guys doing? Hopefully you guys are doing okay. Today we are going to finish off Rise from the Ashes, which is something that we've been wanting to finish for quite a while anyway. So let me just send out the link because I forgot to enable it. Oops. Your orange juice? Okay, your orange juice today. So, we're going to finish off uh, Ace Attorney and then I'm most likely going to take a break for um, the holidays. So, literally next year, I will start the second game of Ace of the Ace Attorney tri Trilogy. Go ahead and get started. Yay! We're so close to being done. So close to being done. We can't wait to see... Yes, he needs to be in jail for all of his crimes. Yes. I'm so sorry, Mr. Wright. I'm sorry for what my sister said. Drastic crimes require drastic measures. That's just the way it is. We did what we had to. In order for him to get the verdict he deserved. I didn't know. I never knew that the SL9 incident was just another name for the Joe Dark killings. Sounds like everyone's heard about these killings but me. Wanted, wanted Dark convicted so badly. That's why she used me. That's why she used what happened to me. What do you mean, what happened to you? It's all there in the file. Joe Dark's last victim was Prosecutor Neil Marshall. When he murdered Officer Marshall's brother, he left behind an incriminating piece of evidence. But what did you have to do with those killings, Emma? On the night Prosecutor Neil Marshall was murdered, Joe Dark 
tried to kill me. What? He tried to kill you? Officer Marshall's brother, Neil, was only trying to save me. So that means you, yes, I was a witness in the Joe Dark trial. I didn't see that one coming. Well, let's talk to her more about that. It happened two years ago. It was right about this time of year, too. There was a terrible thunderstorm that day, unusual for the season. I was alone in my sister's office. We were planning to eat dinner together when she finished her work. Then, suddenly, this terrifying man came bursting into the office. So dark. It seemed like he was running from someone. He pulled out a knife and screamed at me. I didn't know what was going on. Just then, Prosecutor Marshall showed up. Jake Marshall's brother. Press F in the chat for Neil Marshall. He did a, he did his best. He he did his best. He really did, all things considering. Joe Dart tried to make me tried to take me hostage. But before he could, Mr. Marshall tackled him. Then what happened? I I'll, I'll never forget it. Lightning struck and the lights went out. Suddenly, a bolt of lightning flashed outside the window, lighting up the office for an instant. What I saw that burned a permanent picture in my mind. I, I can still see it now. A permanent picture? I don't remember the moment the dark stab, Mr. Marshall. So you were able to testify about that? No, I was only asked about when I was attacked. That must be my mother. Why she made up the crime. Made it up? You mean provided bogus evidence? The prosecutor's office wanted that guilty verdict so badly. Lana forged the evidence and Mr. Edgeworth used it. Edgeworth? Yes. But I'm sure he didn't know anything about it. He couldn't have known he was been give, being given false evidence. Even so, that's when it all started. The rumors about Mr. Edgeworth and me. It's all my fault. If I could just, if I could have just testified properly, none of this would have happened. So it's true, even though he may not have known it. Edgeworth really was involved in falsifying evidence. But again, it's totally not his fault, you know? Like, that's something that he... He didn't... I mean, that's something, as I'm sure as a prosecutor, like, you always kind of have to watch out for. But because he... That was, his, like, his first major case. It's... Yeah... After that case ended, Lana was never the same. She became cold, like she is today. She must not have been able to face up to what she did, especially not to Emma. What do you see in the what did you see in the incident that crime occurred? Dark knocked down Mr. Marshall and raised his knife. Neil Marshall was stabbed right in front of this poor girl. I don't remember what happened after that. Apparently I passed out. When I came to, Lana was cradling me in her arms. Poor Emma, you've been through so much. She really has. I, I couldn't bring myself to testify about that instant. I tried, but the words just wouldn't come out. I drew a picture, but it wasn't any good. 
two years ago, two years ago. You must have been 14. That's understandable. Once it was all over, I made up my mind. I decided when I grew up, I'd become a scientific investigator. I want to be able to fight crime with my testimonies. I find the evidence to make an airtight case. That way, Lana would never have to forge any. I see. I think I've finally started to understand what makes Emma tick. But there's still something that bothers me about that crime. There's something that's puzzling me, Emma. What is it? You said you were in Lana's office at that time, right? That's right. Why then would a serial killer come running in there? Not only that, but he was being chased by a prosecutor? Oh, there's no mystery there. Joe Dark had been taken in for questioning that day. Taken in for questioning? You mean by the police? Of course. This happened at the police department. He tried to run away halfway through the interview and fled into my sister's office. But why did he run all, all the way over to your sister's office? Because the detective's offices in the questioning room are right across from the elevator. Across from the elevator? But Lana was the chief prosecutor, wasn't she? No, silly. Didn't I tell you? Two years ago, Lana was a detective. She was the best in the entire force. What? That's news to me. After the Joe Dark case, she was transferred to the prosecutor's office and made chief prosecutor. Lana used to be a detective. I'd better have another talk with her. Yeah, we need to talk to Lana and see what's going on. Lana! Mr. Wright, it seems I keep causing you trouble. Falsifying evidence. I didn't think you were the type. Criminals don't pay, don't mind playing foul. Why should we? But Lana, if you're wrong, an innocent person might be found guilty. Believe me, I understand the risk. Lana, Emma told me about you. Oh? About how you were a detective two years ago. And how the SL9 incident was the reason for your transfer to the prosecutor's office. That's right. Could you fill me in on the details, especially about the unusual change of jobs? I suppose you have a right to know, Mr. Wright. Yes, we do! We're your fucking lawyer! I know you're trying to, like, not to, but come on. A lot of renovations were uncovered at the trial today. Not the least of which was the fact that this case is largely connected to another one two years ago. Evidence from that case was stolen as well, though I expected as much. I know how obsessive Officer Marshall can be. That trial... It really wasn't fair, was it? I believed in you, Lana. I believed that no matter what happened, you'd always stick to the truth. It couldn't be helped, Emma. At that trial two years ago, I sold my soul. Well, all drama aside, the fact of the matter is at 515, there is no murder at the police department. Tell me it's not true, Lana! What the witness, Miss Starr, said? About you stabbing Mr. Goodman with a knife? Lana, I don't understand. Why won't you tell us? Emma? This doesn't involve just me. I don't think I've ever seen Lana look so phased before. It's true. 
I was a member of the police force two years ago. She was amazing! They still talk about all the cases she and Chief Gant crack together. Chief Gant? He was the deputy chief of police back then, but he still worked the crime scenes. Hi, Star! Welcome to the stream! We're finishing up uh, uh, Ace Attorney, so... Or at least not Ace Attorney. Yes, love Lana. Fuck Gant, though. He's kind of... He's kind of... He's kind of imposing, so... Damn and Gant. He was everything I aspired to be. Circus ass motherfucker, right? <laughs> they were the best team ever! They solved crimes before the reports could even be filed! Emma really idolizes her big sister. <laughs> but now you're chief prosecutor. What happened? I always planned on becoming a prosecutor. The reason I became a detective was... To gain experience investigating crime scenes so you can use that experience in court, right? Gan's help in the SL9 case was crucial to his resolution. After that, he became chief of police and arranged my transfer to the prosecutor's office. How are you today? Hopefully you're doing fine. Or it might be nighttime. Excuse me, it might be nighttime for you, huh? Maybe I should ask more about this investigation of theirs two years ago. Two years ago, I was second in command of the detectives investi investigating Dark. Second in command? That means the investigation led with lead was Damon Gant, right? Yes, Deputy Chief Gant and I shared the same office and the same investigations. They even had the same office. Oh, that's not too late then. Yeah. That's only like, what, a six hour difference then? Right, because it's like one o'clock my time, yeah. Or one twenty, yeah. We led a team of the best detectives on the force. Detective Goodman, whose case it was, Jake Marshall, and Angel Starr. It was the first time Marshall worked with his brother. He was quite... gung-ho. Oh no! You spent the whole day sleeping. Are you feeling okay? Without a doubt, Joe Dark was the serial killer. We asked him to come in for questioning. We were desperate for evidence. That was when his final murder took place. When he tried to murder Emma. Prosecutor Marshall was trying to save me from Dark. You see, the first person who happened upon the scene of the crime was me. Now you tell us. Damon Gant and Neil Marshall were the ones questioning Dark that day. The investigation was in its final stations, and Dark must have suddenly panicked. Oh no. Well, just try to take care of yourself and, you know, just listen to this comfy stream, and hopefully it'll take your worries away. <laughs> so he waited until Gant and Marshall left their guard cell, then fled the room. From there, he ran straight to the office shared by Deputy Chief Gant and myself. That's where he found me. So you were the first person to run the scene, Lana? It appears so. I was filing some papers while Gant and Marshall were questioning Dark. When I returned to my office, I saw three bodies on the floor and smelled blood. Three bodies? Prosecutor Marshall, the victim, Emma, who had passed out, and the suspect, Joe Dark. During the struggle, it seems Mr. Marshall struck a final blow before he died. Okay. Good. Just relax and, you know, 
feel free to chat. Feel free to have fun. So, you're good. Joe Dark had incurred a minor concussion and lay unconscious. What did you do? To be honest, I panicked. I picked up Emma, carried her out of the room, and just held her. Can't blame her. After all, her sister must have gone through. After that, I placed Dark under immediate room arrest. Let me get this straight. You were all involved in the SL9 incident? That's right. Quite a coincidence, hmm? I don't buy it. What are you saying? There's no way everyone involved in this trial was also involved in that incident, just by chance. But that case was solved two years ago! At least one person went to the extremes because they didn't believe it was truly solved. Officer Marshall. Yes, his action came as a surprise to me as well. Ever since his brother died, he's changed completely. Well, can you blame him? I guess he wasn't convinced with the ruling against Joe Dark. Life doesn't end with the closing of the case. Everyone has to live the rest of their lives with their memories. That case just might not be over yet. Oh. Ah, uh, sorry about the sirens in the background. I live by an old per oh, uh, I live by a nursing home. The hell? That is a lot of sirens. The firemen are coming for Larry. <laughs> oh, if, uh, I guess that's what they say. When it's when you smell something, it's often the butts. Emma was assaulted by Dark at the police department, right? Yes, in the office that Damon Gant and I share. The office that Mr. Gant now occupies by himself. The chief's office. Maybe we should have a look at the chief's office. The site of the final SL9 murder. Oh, we gotta go. We gotta hustle. Hustle, hustle. Yeah, it really does. Like, honestly, I I would be terrified to be in the same room as him. Like, with his Zeus ass, looking ass, motherfucking ass, clown ass, circus ass. I don't see Detective Gumshoe anywhere. Things seem kind of quiet around here today. You're right. The chief of detectives seems the same, though. Why don't we go look for some other people to talk to? Right. We can come back here later. That man must be the chief of detectives. He's staring at the scream so hard it might shatter. What? Dark case may have been fabricated. That's what I thought all along. I just never bothered to tell anyone. Now there's a guy who cares about his work. That must be one of the detectives. He's mumbling something to himself. <laughs> it's so A+. Plus. That's it, the villain used a time machine. Very clever indeed. That would explain the alibi. The future might not be so far away after all. He's not writing a report. He's writing a novel. Is he still writing that same novel with the cassette tape? Uh, Howdy, Bambina. Oh, Mr. Marshall! No, I know it takes time, but how many criminals does he have? <laughs> I never thought or I never thought things would turn out this turn out this way when I woke up this morning. You never know where life will lead you, eh, Bambina? I should have known my luck had run out when old Billy dried up this morning. Billy? Must be his pet cactus. Say, where are you headed? Just over to the prosecutor's office for a little interrogation. It's a voluntary appearance. 
But we all know why we'll be coming back. Sorry, but you can't go to the interview today, partner. But Mr. Marshall, why did you do it? Why are two prospectors head with? If there was ever, if ever there was a case I needed to know the truth about it, it was that one. Before you turn yourself in, Mr. Marshall, would you mind telling us exactly what happened? Hmm, looks like I won't be getting a steak lunch today. Well, let's talk to Marshall. Let's talk to him before he goes. Something was fishy about that trial from the beginning. It wasn't just me either. All the detectives thought so. What do you mean, fishy? Some of the facts reported were inconsistent with the evidence we found. For example, the murder weapon. The murder weapon? You mean that switchblade knife with the broken tip? That was Joe Dark's all right. But, in the initial autopsy report, a question was raised. A question? The blade of the knife. The blade of the knife was not a perfect match with the wound this victim sustained. What does that mean? It means there is a good chance that knife was not the murder weapon. Ugh. However, in the report that was finally submitted, that possibility has been erased. Could the facts have been concealed with forged evidence? That case left behind scars on all of us. The scars that... The scars that the SL9 incident left behind. I got the looks, but he got the brain. He was one of the best prosecutors around. He said I got the looks. Oh, y'all. He's... He's like this. He's like this, y'all. I had just made detective when it went down. It was our first case together. How old was he? Your brother. He was 27 at the time. Oh no! The 27 curse got to him! He was awarded the highest honor that very day. The highest honor? You mean the king of prosecutors? I knew it. What are you looking at me like that for? That's an honor for a prosecutor. Mr. Marshall must have really been close with his brother. The day the SL9 incident took place, that wasn't the same day as... That's right. It was the day of the evidence transfer. Interesting. It was, a, it was drizzling that morning, and by nightfall there was thunder. I can't believe two years have gone by already. I tried to steal the evidence so the case wouldn't die. Apparently someone tried to stop you. Detective Goodman was murdered and the evidence locker was empty. There was something going on behind the scenes in that case. We all knew that later. Every detective involved in that investigation save one was taken care of. Miss Starr was fired and I was demoted and boxed away in a tiny room. What about Detective Goodman? If they did something to him too, the commissioners would get suspicious. No, they were careful enough not to be obvious, too obvious. They? Who are you talking about? Don't get upset, Bambina. I mean, damn it, Gant and Von Sky. The investigation lead, Dame again, and his second in command, Lana Sky. There wasn't a person on the force who hadn't heard of that duel. That case was the biggest step in both of their careers. After the case ended, Lana transferred to the prosecutor. After that case ended, Lana transferred to the prosecutor's office, right? Yeah. Dame again, the new chief of police, arranged for that to happen. She's never been the same since she left. <gasps> Everyone who knew her said so. Chief Prosecutor Sky was totally different when she was a detective. Now that you mentioned it, Emma said something like that too. Tell me, 
What happened to my sister? Sorry, Bam Beauty, but her secret is too well guarded. I never found out. Lana's secret. It all started two years ago. So there you have it. That's my story. Did you enjoy it, partner? It was certainly enlightening. There's one thing for sure I found out in court today. That boy Edgeworth isn't my enemy. Yeah, he's not the enemy. He never was the enemy. He was the one who used the falsified evidence to get a guilty verdict. But someone else was the one who gave him that evidence and planned everything. That someone is damn again. Don't believe me? Well, I don't blame you. I won't even be a patrolman after today. Too bad I won't be around to work with you. When you become a real scientific investigator. Adios, Bambina! I just realized that, um... I just realized that Jake Marshall is a basically a fucking big old reference to uh, fucking Clint Eastwood. Like, Clint Eastwood and, you know, the bad, the good, the ugly. Basically, he's like, he thinks he's like above the law and shit. It's a western. It's old, ha dirty, hairy, shit like that. That's basically, oh my god, I don't know why it took me this long to realize that. What the fuck? <laughs> the fact that I thought of the song first rather than the person. <laughs> it's all fair. It's all good. It's all good, Ash. I, uh, at least you're not like me who didn't realize it till years later. This place is always pretty empty, but today is deserted. There must be everyone's busy solving crimes. Oh, if you're looking for the others, they're all in the conference room. Uh, thanks. Wow, he actually talked to us. But the chief prosecutor saying what she did and the decision about what to do. Oh no, are the German versions, uh, uh, are they more punny? Or are they just like, not as good as the English version? Star. With the chief prosecutor saying what she did and the decision about what to do about Mr. Edward, not to mention our statement to the media at tomorrow's trial. There's more chaos going on than Thanksgiving and Christmas put together. I think festive is the word you usually use for those. Well, no. Depends on your family. And he's not wrong. Um, sir? Would you like to have a look around Chief Gant's office? Just use the connecting hallway to the other building and take the elevator to the top floor. Really? You mean, it's okay for us to go in there? I mean, we aren't police officers or anything. Hey, you're right. You can't go in there. It's off limits. Now I see where Detective Gumshoe gets his unique charm. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's head to the chief's office. I'm gonna see. No, okay, it hasn't changed. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna change. Okay. Well, now we know that where it is. Oh man, look at that ash. You see that? It's it's perfectly suited. Perfectly suited for uh for Zeus. Along with the clown music. Whoa, where am I? And the chief is off silly? At least, that's what it said on the door. Check out that pipe organ. That's real, isn't it? Oh no! Gant is, Phantom of, is the Phantom from the Phantom of the Opera. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, no, I quit my fucking job immediately. <laughs> F in the chat for Ash. Hey, I used to take organ lessons in kindergarten. They used to call me Little Miss Spock. I thought... I thought I was a genius until they tried teaching me the notes. I never could remember where C was. Hmm? There he is. Oh! It's you two! 
Chief Camp! He put that paper he was reading in his desk. So, Raito, have you been swimming lately? Clavier's name is Cantillon, and I have no clue where that game came from. Oh no! Well, they should probably should have stuck to Clavier. Or, oh, fuck, I'm probably not even pronouncing that correctly, but they probably should have stuck to that instead of whatever that is. Uh, no, I haven't. I've been kind of busy lately. I can appreciate that. I've had my hands full, too, with Mr. Marshall's misconduct and Lana's provocative statement. Provocative statement. Oh, you mean about the forged evidence. Hello, Kuchin Cow. Nope, this is not my uh, first playthrough. Um, I've actually played Phoenix Wright, but it's been years since I've played this. I'm all, I really just I just really like this uh, this game. So I'm not new, but I want to try to keep it spoiler free for those people in the uh, uh, in the chat who hasn't played it. So if you want, you can hang out and we can hang out and talk. Two years have passed since that incident. My, how time flies! See that big picture on the wall over there? Clavier will be closer to pronunciation W. Oh, Clavier. 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 Oh, <laughs> well, he's a. He's a. He's basically a boy band, though. Like, he really, like, he's a rock star, anyway. That picture... That's a picture of Lana, Neil, and me. So this is Mr. Marshall's brother, Prosecutor Neil Marshall. Oh, yay, I got it! I learned a little bit of German today. We took it to commemorate our work together. Something's not right with this picture. I can't quite seem to put my finger on it, though. Well, it's going to our court record. Anyway, I like to reminisce all day, but there are matters that need my attention. I'm going to lock up here, so let's go out together. Oh, but this office... It was a crime scene two years ago, wasn't it? <laughs> that case has long since been over. There's no need to investigate it anymore. All the same, we still like to have a look around. Perhaps you didn't hear me. I said, there's no need to investigate it anymore. <laughs> now hurry up and get out. I have a meeting to attend. Well, we got kicked out. Looks like we aren't welcome. It seems that case isn't over with yet. Af yet, after all. What do you mean? Keith can't deny their request to, to search the crime scene. That means there must be a reason he doesn't want us looking around in there. You mean like a clue? There's gotta be a way we can get inside the chief's office. Well, let's... Go back in and try it again. <laughs> hey, pal. Detective Gumshoe, aren't you supposed to be in the meeting? I'm, uh, just taking a breather. My feet hurt. Oh, poor Gumshoe. From sitting so long? Actually, from serving everyone coffee. Sounds like Detective Gumshoe's still out of the loop. Say, have either of you seen Mr. Edgeworth? Edgeworth? No. Why, why do you ask? He's under fire from both the police department and the prosecutor's office. It's almost like the battles between you two in court. That sounds serious. Is it because of what my sister said? That's basically what it boils down to. That falsified evidence two years ago? Now Mr. Edgeworth has the whole world after his blood. 
Yikes. Well, Gumshoe. Tell us what you know. But why would Edgewood be blamed? It's not like he knew the evidence was forged. Lana Sky is the guilty party here, isn't she? Regardless, a prosecutor is responsible for the evidence they present in court. Not only that, but as you know, there have been a lot of rumors going around about Mr. Edgeworth. His amazing talent as a prosecutor has kept him safe from those who don't like him. But now with this... Are there really so many people who hate him? In our world, only those with talent rise to the top. Mr. Edgeworth not only has that, but he's young. There's no better recipe I know of for, en for making enemies. Hey, hey, Dick, keep up the good work. Yes, sir. Let's go out for lunch again sometime. My treat. Yes, sir. You gotta take me back to that joint sometime, okay, Dick? Yes, sir. It seems you don't have any problems with enemies. Dickless Gumshoe. No. <laughs> Not Dickless Gumshoe. Yeah, well... I'm careful not to stick out. Anyway, I'm a bit worried about him. Under all of this pressure, I'm afraid Mr. Edgeworth is just like crack. Actually, I took a look at the file earlier while the coffee was brewing. He seems genuinely concerned for Edgeworth. Of course, that's his, that's his bro. Like, I still think about that one meme uh, where Edgeworth and Phoenix are kissing, but... Nicholas Gumshoe is uh, holding Edgeworth up and he's like giving up giving a thumbs up like that I, I, I'm just gonna that, that's exactly how I see their relationship <laughs> like he's a bro we, we stand well did you find anything the only evidence dark left behind was during his final attack his final attack you mean when he killed prosecutor Marshall who was trying to protect some girl me. It seems Detective Gumshoe never realized Emma was the girl. That's when you left the most incriminating evidence of all. Well, what was it? Oh, um, let's see. I think it had something to do with the murder weapon. Oh, I forget. Look, it's all written somewhere in here, okay? His powers of recollection never failed to impress. He's doing his best, Phoenix. Maybe we should show him the murder weapon. It might jog his memory. Well, let's talk about his crimes first. Gerald Dark was 42 at the time of the crime. He was just your run-of-the-bill businessman. Well, if the if the flashbacks were any indication, that's a rough, that's a really, really rough 42. A businessman? What made him take two serial killings? One day, on his way home from work, he hit someone with his car. With his car? So, it was an accident? An accident, yes. But it transformed him into an animal. An animal. Yeah, see, that's a rough 42. He killed a man. A kid walked by just said, so he killed him too. That's when he was burning the body. A jogger came on the scene and was killed as well. Finally, he turned himself in. So he basically killed people. So he hit some guy with a car, somebody with a car. He's like, fuck, I, I, I killed somebody. Someone came by. And what is the fuck is this, Hitman? So he basically is like, he sees a dead body. He's like, oh fuck, I, I, I fucked it. What the fuck? Then some guy or some old lady, she's like, oh no, someone died. He's like, fuck. And he's like, I'm gonna fucking kill her. And then in the process of killing this old lady, a little kid's like, Hey guys, what's up? He kills the little kid. And it's like, it, it just keeps piling up. It never ends. Oh no. Seems like he was a pretty careless animal. Of course, this is all conjecture. There wasn't a single shred of evidence. So he turned himself in. Yes, but in the middle of his questioning, he fled and murders his final victim. Prosecutor Marshall. 
That crime was witnessed by someone too, but luckily, Dark was arrested on the spot. It's a good thing that last witness wasn't killed. That last witness. AKA Emma. Why- why is he like... Making jokes here. Not that I'm necessarily making jokes, like he's being a little bit careless here. Uh, maybe that's so much evidence in here. It's a mess. Um, about this. Hey, is that? It has a tag attached to it with the label S09 incident on it. I believe this would be the broken murder weapon you were speaking of. What are you doing with that? Ever since the case was closed, that knife's been locked away in the locker. On the day Detective Goodman was murdered, this suddenly disappeared from the locker. And was found in Mr. Edwards' car muffler. That's it! Now I remember what the incriminating piece of evidence was. When you show me that knife, it all came back to me. Well, what is it, Detective? Quick! Before you forget again. This knife. It was Joe. This knife. It was Joe Dark's, wasn't it? That's right. We traced it back to the store he bought it at. Plus, it had his fingerprints on it, too. But no one actually witnessed him using it to murder anyone, right? That's where his luck ran out. When you take a good look at the knife, you'll see that it's you'll see it's broken. You don't have to take a good look to notice that. Yeah, yeah well anyway. Take a guess where the broken tip off the knife was found. That's what did him in. Where was it? The victim, Neil Marshall, was carrying it inside his own body. Uh, it was found deep inside the stab wound. Didn't match dark ni Dark's knife? You bet! Down to the last fiber! That's pretty... conclusive. Okay, so... Okay. Well, there you have it in a nutshell. That's all I know. Can I ask you one more thing? What is it? If it's money you need, you should ask Chief Gant. It's not money, but it does concern the Chief. His office is a crime scene, right? It's where Prosecutor Neil Marshall was murdered. The Chief's out now, and his office is locked. But we like to have a look around if that's okay. <sighs> well, any detective's ID card can unlock the car and let the door. What? Really? But if I let a civilian in there, I'd be charged with breach of trust. Breach of trust? Simply put, I'd be canned. Oh, sorry, pal. I don't plan on getting fired because of you. He's like, no offense. How about this ID card? It was Detective Goodman. That won't work either. The data was deleted the day he died. Oh... So in other words, gumshoes are our only chance of getting into that office. I wonder if there's something we can show him that would make him change his mind. Uh, I know where we should go. He's asking about Edgeworth, right? Well? Can you imagine how much taxi fares he- or how much Uber he has been spending? No one's here today. Not even the star. Everyone's probably busy looking into what exactly went down in the evidence room. That must be where the detectives are. But we proved it in court today that on the day of the crime, no one was murdered in the evidence room at 5.15. Yeah, I thought we were finally making some headway in our case. But instead, it looks like we just ended up making Lana look even more guilty. Hang in there, Lana. I've got to find all the answers by tomorrow. I 
wonder if Edward is back yet. There he is! It looks like he's writing something. Well, what are you doing here? He sure was quick to throw that paper on the floor. Tough day in court, huh? Hmm. I've had to live the past two years. Past two years with rumors flying around. What's another allegation to me? Cheer up, Mr. Edgeworth. I'm rooting for you. That's Edgeworth for you. Always trying to hide his real feelings. His unnecessary feelings. So, what do you want? Unlike some people, I don't have all day. Well, let's talk to Edgeworth. There's no excuse for what I've done. Two years ago, I used false evidence to obtain a guilty verdict. That's what it all breaks down to, and nothing I do can erase the, that fact. But you didn't know, did you? I mean, that the evidence was falsified. The police department and the prosecutor's office share a bond of trust. If that bond is broken, we stand to lose everything. The police department's error is my error, my responsibility as the prosecutor in charge. That fact remains the same no matter what excuses I might have. Mr. Edgeworth. I take pride in my work. So tell me why. Why has it all come down to this? Even Edgeworth can't keep this kind of emotion bottled up. Are you up for the trial tomorrow? Hmm. First, last year's trial, and now this one. It seems all you do is worry about me. <coughs> to be honest, you're getting on my nerves. But Mr. Edgeworth, you can't just walk out on the trial. Tomorrow's the last day. It's too late to change prosecutors. I'll bet that's what my superiors are banking on. I never thought this that case would come back to haunt me like this. What do you mean? The list of evidence, it seems too short. Most lists run twice as long. It's only a, it's only half as long as most lists? That is odd. After Neil Marshall was murdered, I became prosecutor for that case. I may not have been part of the investigation, but I knew what I had to do. Use the evidence I was given to prove the, the, the suspect's guilty. To prove the suspect guilty. That was really the only thing on my mind at the time. Say, we just saw a picture taken around that time. That picture. Something seems strange about it. Could you tell us again about what happened that day? The day Detective Goodman was murdered? You were participating in a ceremony over at the station, right? I never cared for ceremonies, but I had to attend that one. Because you were awarded this? Those receiving awards can't exactly skip out on the ceremony. I finished up at the office in the morning, then drove over to the police station. Oh. You, you... Finished up at the office? Yes, just odds and ends, clerical stuff. I didn't plan on returning to the office that day. That is, until I was asked to take something back. Take something back? This. Oh yeah, Chief Gant asked you to hold on to that, didn't he? Yes, and it was a piece of evidence in a case that closed half a year ago. He asked me to bring it back to the prosecutor's office. That's the story we heard yesterday. <laughs> so you came back here to the prosecutor's office because the chief asked you to? That's right. <sighs> well, maybe he knows something about these, this picture. <sighs> this picture. This picture was hanging on the wall in Chief Gant's office. Prosecutor Neil Marshall. He had just started making a name for himself. Looks like this was taken when he received the King of Prosecutors trophy. Speaking of that, there's something that bothers me. Yes? The trophy Mr. Marshall is holding. It's a little different than yours. Yes, you're right. 
Uh, I remember now. Remember what? Because that was what the official prosecutor's trophy looked like until two years ago. There's a story behind its design. A story? Sounds interesting. Would you mind telling it to us? It's simple, really. Contradiction. That's what the award's based on. Contradiction. This award originates from the ancient from an ancient Chinese tale. In Chinese, the word contradiction is written with two characters. The first name means halberd, and the second means shield. Have you heard this story? Me? Oh, uh, sure. Everybody knows. Everyone knows that. Well, why don't you tell it though, for Emma's sake? Very well. Story time. Long ago, in the kingdom of Chu, there was an arms merchant. One day, he presented the king with two items. The first was a halberd he claimed could slice through any shield or armor. The second was a shield he claimed could withstand any weapon. Hmm. Wait a minute. Those claims contradict each other! Very perceptive. But then again, you've heard this story before, right? Anyway, as you've mentioned, the very descriptions of these items discredit them both. When the king pointed this out, the merchant was left speechless, and thus the Chinese word for contradiction was born. Oh, I see. So the chipped shield and broken knife symbolize... Precisely so. They symbolize the merchant's items. The ancient... T tale ends with the merchant at a loss for words, but it's in our nature to pursue matters to their conclusion, even if it results in something as ugly as this. Wow. Thanks, Mr. Edgeworth. I learned something new today. That's funny. If that's so, then why were you only given a shield? You'll have to ask Chief Gant. Two years ago, he had the halberd part of the award abolished. Chief Gant. Huh. Very interesting. Well, what's this? I wonder what he was writing before. Come on, Mr. Wright. Let's take a look. Are you crazy? Edward is sitting right there. Just distract him. I'll check it out. Uh, hey, Edward. Is that Detective Gumshoe in the window up there? Out, th out the window there? Oh no, he's falling to the ground. Hold on. First let me see what this girl's doing crawling around my feet. He didn't even look. Press F in the chat for Gumshoe. Just because he deserves that. As of, of course... Of course, uh, uh, nobody seems to care about poor, poor Gumshoe. What? Letter of r r r r r If you're having trouble reading, I'll read it for you. It says, Letter of Resonation. Resonation? Edgeworth, you don't mean... I'm tired, right? I feel as if... Something inside me has died. But Mr. Edgeworth, none of it is your fault. I know the path I've walked. And you don't need to tell me. And the path I've walked hasn't been just a just one. I can't forgive myself for what I've done. And no one else should forgive me either. Uh-oh. I think he's serious. Mr. Wright, please, you have to do something. This letter of resignation. I wonder if I can use it for anything. I just love that Edward's discarded letter of resignation. He's serious. Okay. Can we talk to you? No. We can't talk to you anymore. So, I guess at this point... Excuse me. There's your wife, Ash. What 
Easy. Care for a quarter pound of roast beef? Miss Star! I guess she's out of munches. You certainly are the curious sort, aren't you? Kind of like the first person who sucked a cow's nipple to discover milk. Still, I never thought you'd go digging up that case from two years ago. Everyone in this trial was involved in the SL9 incident. Not only that, but the murder occurred on the very day that the evidence from that case was due for transferal. That can't be all attributed to a mere coincidence. Aren't you forgetting something? You know that little scene I happened to witness? The instant Lana stabbed Detective Goodman with a knife. No matter how much of the past you dig up, it won't change what I saw. Roast beef is meant to be savored when eaten. Miss Star's hatred toward Lana. It all dates back two years ago. Jill Dark. That's a name I'll soon not forget. We trailed him for half a year. Oh, the pressure. Still, I don't think I was ever more alive than I was then. Those days were steamier than a bowl of hot gravy. Poor old Jake Marshall, though. Must have been going through hell. You mean, because of his brother's death? They were close, those two. After Neil died, something took over Jake. He became obsessed. Seeing Jake like that made her all the more desperate. Well, because she can relate, you know? Like, you know? Like, hold on, I'm just taking an allergy med. Because my allergies are year-round suffering. Don't worry, I got nothing but water. All water. Nice, I made it. Her. Lana Sky. My sister? The best of the best were part on that SL9 case. Of course, they were led by that legendary duo. Lana and Chief Gant. That legendary pair was the reason we were able to keep up our investigation. That's why we were so shocked over how it turned out. You mean, with the forging of the evidence? Don't get me wrong, Joe Dark got what he deserved. Still, it was obvious the evidence produced in the court was being manipulated. Items our team never found were suddenly appear, while other items were kept secret. But you don't have proof? Anything illegal was done. I'm proof enough of what happened. Oh. After that case, all of us save Goodman were relieved of our duties. Most without even so much as an explanation. Then Lana Sky transferred to the prosecutor's office and became chief prosecutor. Lana always wanted to be a prosecutor. Nothing's quite as simple as it appears. Huh? Lana Sky was merely being used as a pawn. That's my take on the matter. She was being used? Damon Gant and Lana Sky. <gasps> Gant led the investigation. With Lana second in command, they were the best. They solved all kinds of cases together, didn't they? Damon Gant's magnetism in particular was almost unreal. It's, would you say it's almost lightning? <laughs> his magnetism? By that, I mean his ability to attract evidence. He produced the most incredible evidence in the cases he handled. So it's conf confirmed. Gant is a sag. He's a Sagittarius. Incredible evidence? You mean... Oh, yes. There were rumors about him, even back then. No one dared to confirm him, though. I take it she's talking about forged evidence. Back then, everyone looked up to Lana. 
all the detectives wouldn't be like her. Oh, really? Oh, yes, myself included. I was a fool, really. She hated anything crooked and always watched out for the other detectives. That's why she was so concerned for Jake. Mr. Marshall. When Jake's brother was murdered, she felt as if she felt as she as, she felt as if she had lost her own brother. If it wasn't for her, I don't think Jake would have ever recovered from his shock. That's what makes it all the more infuriating. The star. That's why I'll never be able to forgive her. Why did she have to turn so cold after that? Lana transferred to the prosecutor's office two years ago, didn't she? Yes, thanks to Chief Gant's powerful influence. Chief... That's right. Having solved the SL9 case, his position, his position as chief was secure. There was only one thing left for him to control. And then, no one else could stand in his way. The prosecutor's office. What? You mean, that's why Lana was transferred? If he can control the chief prosecutor, he could control the prosecutor's office. That must have been his goal all along. But, but how could he control Lana? I don't know. But one thing's for sure. Ever since that case ended, she's never been the same. It's only logical to conclude. There must have been a, there must have been a reason for her to change. At last, I'm finally getting close to the bottom of this ugly mess. Thank you, Miss Star. You listen to me, Fluffy. It takes more than just ingredients to create fine cuisine. I hope you turn out to be a better chef than I did. Well, thank you, Miss Star. At least she didn't try to kill us. That wasn't bad. Well, let's see if we can find a uh, gumshoe. Oh, you're back. You're still here? I've got to make 150 copies of these files. Brewing coffee, copying files. I'm turning into a regular DJ. You're a DJ as well? If I'm not mistaken, I think he means desk jockey. Oh, that DJ. I gotta admire your persistency, but my answer's still no. Huh? I'm not letting you in the chief's office, period. It beat my neck on the line. That office is the last crime scene in the SL9 incident. I have to take a look in there. There's gotta be something we can do to make the detective change his mind. Yes, we do, actually. <laughs> Hello, Tanner. Welcome to the stream. Hope you, uh, you've been enjoying this. Due to recent events, I hereby announce my resignation as public prosecutor. He really wrote a resignation letter. Wow, even when resigning, Mr. Edgeworth is cold and concise. Still, it wasn't his fault. Someone has to be held responsible. That's how it is in the grown-up world. Well, that's how it's supposed to be, but, you know. Yeah, no. Yeah, but that responsibility means nothing if he just quits. Well, not everyone sees it that way. To truly take responsibility, you should have to work for the rest of your life for no pay. That's one tough grown-up world there. Well, let's present it to him. What's this crumpled up piece of paper? No way! Mr. Edgeworth can't be serious! Is he ever not serious? I can't believe they pushed him this far. Mr. Edgeworth really feels responsible. When I first met him, I thought he was as cold as ice too. But now I know different now. He trusted us detect he trusted us detectives to provide him with sound evidence. 
But we just... We betrayed him. Detective. That's it. I made up my mind. But... Here, take my ID card. We can't do that. If someone found out... They would let you off the hook with another lost item report. Look at me. It's no secret I'm already out of the loop. After all, I'm friends with Mr. Edgeworth. Depending on how this case turns out, it may already be as good as terminated. What? So at least let me do this. For Mr. Edgeworth's sake. Alright, Detective. Thank you. Well... Well, you know, thank you. Oh, look, it's Dick. Yep. Hello, calm down, chill out. Welcome to the stream. How are you? How are you? How are you both, you and Tanner, doing today? Or tonight, wherever you are. Here goes, Mr. Wright. We're in. We're in! <laughs> oh, I'm doing good. Just enjoying the... Just doing... Just enjoying Ace Attorney. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the stream so far. So far, so good. If anyone fights us now, Detective Gumshoe's a goner. If that happens, I'm counting on you to bail me out. Eee! Gah! <laughs> Sorry, I thought you were a ghost. I didn't even know you could slap a ghost. Ah! Detective Gumshoe! What are you doing sneaking up on us like that? I... I... I, I wasn't sneaky. I was just worried something might go wrong. So I came too. Oh, Gumshoe, he's such a puppy. He's such a good pupper. I love him. If you're here, then what's the point of giving us your ID card? Hey, don't do that to my car. I hardly ever get a chance to come in here. So I figured I'd have to look around myself. Besides, we're all in this together now. You really want to get fired, don't you? Not if we're lucky. Now come on, let's see what we can find. Find out. I've got a bad feeling about this. No, I don't stream Minecraft. I actually don't even own it. But, uh, I mostly stream uh, visual novels. So... That dust on the other side of the room. Was that your sister's? Yes, that's where I was waiting for Lana. You're getting some Castlevania vibes. Well, to be fair, uh, Gant, and you'll see him in a bit, he's actually based, uh, his design is based off of Zeus. It's just that this just happens to be a, uh... I can't believe David Gant is Dracula. No, he's Phantom of the Opera. On that day two years ago, is anyone using it now? No, sir. This is entirely Chief Scant's office now. He practices a strict policy of preserving the crime scene. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's, it's very Castlevania vibes. But no, I don't, I don't stream Minecraft. I never played Minecraft, actually. That's a strange reason to leave it there. How dare you slander Eric Von Phantom of the Opera shaking my head. Oh, thank you for the follow. Calm down, chill out. No, this is actually the first game. I'll be starting the uh, uh, the second game in, after the holiday seasons. Next year, literally. <laughs> I usually do it on the weekends too, so yeah. He leaves it as a warning to everyone else. He wants us to always be alert. He told us so. He told us so himself at our New Year's party. 
Of course, he was pretty intoxicated at the time. I see. So, ever since Lana left, no one ever touches his desk? No one except Chief Gant and the cleaning lady who was here each morning. Still, two years have passed since that incident. There can't possibly be any clues remaining. Can I ask you something? Sure. You only came here to look around, right? Because it's one of those SL9 crime scenes. Oh, you're on the first case of the first game. Okay, well, just just be careful that there's a lot... Uh, you'll s oh, you're in the fourth case. Oh, okay. Uh, you'll see... Well, I'm planning to end it today. Or not... Yeah, I'm planning to end this, this case today, so... If you want, you can always come back literally next year to start watching the second playthrough. I mean, that's your only reason for coming here, isn't it? Why do you ask? You don't think. Nah, you wouldn't be. No. No, there's no way. Never mind. Don't worry about it. Okay, now let's look around for a, a, a bit more. Hey, hold on! Not so fast, buddy! Huh? What is it? Would someone tell you, don't worry about it? It's supposed to start bothering you, pal. You just don't let it go like that. S sorry. This guy's starting to get on my nerves. Man, leave Gumshoe alone! Okay, so what's bothering you? You two don't think. Chief Gant. You might be a suspect, do you? What? He's right, Mr. Wright. What do we think of him? Chief Gant. So it's finally come to this. What do I think of him? Perhaps it's best I don't divulge my feelings. Yet. There you go. Ignoring me again. Oh, gumshoe. Uh, no clothes here. Oops, I meant. You think he's orange? Well, you're not wrong. He's definitely very orange. But why? Hmm. Much to think about. <laughs> this was Lana's Dex. It sure is tidy. Lana's always been a meticulous cleaner. There's not even any dust on it. Looks like someone's still keeping it clean. Does Lana ever come back here? No. Chief Gant must still keep it clean in memory of their partnership. They were the stuff legends were made of. Does he keep it in memory of her or in memory of the crime? Orange, the color of suspicion. Oh. <laughs> hmm, let's see. You know who else wears orange, Larry? In this essay, I will... Man! Let's Thank you for the follow, Tanner. Oh, I need to that. Hmm. We gotta, we really gotta. Hmm. Actually, I wonder. OP, where's the, where's the, where's the essay? Where's the essay? Where is the essay? Hey, look, they're hard to make out, but there's some dark red stains here. Hmm, looks like blood. Do you think Detective Goodman's blood somehow got on this when he was stabbed? 
Not likely. Not likely. This blood looks like it's been there for months, maybe longer. This jar was evidence in the SL9 district. They might be with blood gone on to me. Huh. Much to talk about. Wow, look at the size of, the ch of Chief Gant's desk. Speaking of that, when we were here earlier. Oh, it's you two. Chief Gant. He put that paper he was reading in his desk. I wonder what he was reading. This looks like a list of evidence. A list of evidence? In most cases, the list runs twice as long as this, though. Hey, look at the case name! Huh? SL9 incident? I wonder what this is doing here. Hold on, detective. What did you just say? I said... I wonder what... No, about evidence list. Normally they're twice as long? That's right. I guess there wasn't a lot of evidence. A half-sized list of evidence. The list of evidence, it seems too short. Most lists run twice as long. Just like what Mr. Edward said. What would the other half of the list be doing here? I knew it! The chief must be hiding something about that case! It would appear so. Alright. That's not what I wanted. That's not what I wanted! Nope. This is what I wanted, and I want to check out that list. Wait, what the fuck? I wonder what this is? It looks like someone drew some kind of sketch here. What is it? Did you find something? I can't make it out. I better be- I better keep quiet about it for now. Huh? Huh? Oh, no, it's nothing. Why are your eyes moving about like that, Mr. Wright? I better not forget about this picture. Okay, yeah, let's keep that on the DL. So I can't believe Larry is, this, is, a, is an artist. This is a safe, isn't it? Safe. That word is, that word is rife with intrigue. Uh, okay, if you say so. It looks like a code needs to be entered in this panel to open it. A seven-digit number. I think I know... Yeah, I think I know what it is, too. So let's input it. Do you know what it is? I have a hunch. Oh, I know! You want to try my birthday? It's... I have a better idea. Here goes nothing. <laughs> oh shit! Yep! Bingo. What number did you enter? Whose birthday was that, pal? Seven, 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 seven. Oh, uh, seven. Just sevens. Nothing but sevens. The final ID card number on that record. What? The number of the mysterious executive officer who entered the room that day. You mean... 777 That ID number? I think you're one seven shy this time. That could mean only one thing. That's Chief Gant's ID number. Say... Anyone care to look inside? Well, we have no, we're gonna, we're gonna look at it. Let's do it. We have already broken so many laws. Is there any money in there? How much does he have stashed away? Oh, gumshoe. Yes, Tanner, seven. Look, it's a, a, a shard from a broken cup. This somehow looks familiar. Where have I seen this before? There's something else in here, too. What's this? It looks like a piece of leather cloth. 
This is a handprint, isn't it? Hey! I saw someone wearing a shirt like that once! You think Chief, the Chief made up the design? Uh, I don't think so. Oh, well, it was just a thought. Is that it? This is all that was in the safe? Uh, apparently so. It's empty now. A piece of cloth with a handprint on it. And a broken shard from the cup. They look like pieces of evidence. Yeah, but unless you can prove they have something to do with this case. I'm afraid I can't just let you take them. After all, it's my neck on the line here. Great, now I have to prove their relevancy to get them. How are these two items related to the SL9 incident? Come on, there's got to be something we can show the detective. Hmm. Actually... Remember the broken jar we have? The jar, the unstable jar? Detective Gunchu, could you have another look at this jar? I remember when the three of us put that back together. Ah, those were the days. It's kind of early to be nostalgic. Wasn't this jar a piece of the evidence from that case? That's right! One of the shards had a SL9 incident sticker on it. Doesn't this ring any bells? You know, that diamond we just found? You mean this one? That was in the safe? Yes, that one! That was in the safe. Oh! Now that you mention it, it's ringing a lot of bells! Let's see if it fits! Well, let's assemble! Here, let me see that shard. I'll take a crack at this. Go ahead, pal. Show us what a rookie can do! Mr. Wright, here's some glue. If I could piece this together again, it'll prove Chief Grant was knowingly hiding evidence. Here goes. Let's see. Oh, snap. Um, I've never played Danganronpa before. But I've been thinking about maybe, um, doing it on stream. I don't know. Depends on, you know, reception and all that. There, it fits like a charm. That, of course, means Chief can't willingly and knowingly hit a piece of this jar in his safe. Oh. In other words, he concealed a piece of evidence from the SL9 incident. But, hey guys, get a load of this. What is it? This piece you just attached. It's different from the others. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, Dungeon Rope is a really good series. There's a reddish line on it. A reddish line. That's blood. I don't get it. Why would you get hide this in the safe? much to talk about. Well, let's see what... <laughs> Detective Gumshoe, I'd like, to have, I'd like you to have a look at this. Hey, I know what that is. So you want to take some fingerprints? That's a great idea, Detective. Alright, go to town. Sheesh. What are, you, what are you doing? Why are you sticking your hand out like that? Go ahead, take my fingerprints. Uh, um, is that your fingerprints we want to take? Huh? Come on, this isn't the time for jokes. We're talking about that cloth that we found in the safe. Oh, <laughs> I knew that. The one with the handprint on it, right? Sheesh, where's your sense of humor? I get it, he was trying to lighten it. Lighten the mood. Okay, Mr. Wright, let's check for prints. Sprinkle the powder on the cloth. Then once they've been absorbed into the prints, blow the rest away. Why are you my mom? I don't have to be told a million times. Alright, let's get this over with. Actually... 
one to try. Okay, let's move on to the different thing now. Maybe this one. This one seems to be imprinted the most. So now we're dusting. We're dusting. I like to cover the entire screen. But uh, uh, I think I mentioned this before. But uh, uh, oh, shh. I, I did it again. Hold on. Oh, fix that. Sorry about that. But uh, in the DS version, they uh, uh, they let you do this, and then you would actually have to blow into the mic. But obviously, I'm not gonna do that to you guys. I just have to do that. Press the button. But since we didn't see that, there's a. Let me see. Let me see. There it goes. Got a fingerprint. So who could it be? Not Angel. Wait. Why does it look like Emma's? There's no way, right? Oh no. Oh no, this is terrible. No. How can this be? Anyways, I'm just gonna be right back real quick. I'm just gonna get some water. Uh, make sure you guys have your water, your comfy, you're in blanky mode. So I'll be right back. Not gonna take long. I got the water. Let me just settle down real quick. As much as as much fun it is as it is to do Gumshoe's voice, sometimes it just hurts my throat. Ooh. Okay. Okay, I think I should be good to go now. What are Emma's fingerprints doing here? Hey, you found the match? Whose fingerprints were they? Huh? Oh, uh, it seems that the prints are too old. They aren't clear enough to get a match. Oh, that's too bad. I thought they'd be Dark's prints. Psst, hey you, over here. What's going on here? What are that kid's prints doing inside the chief's safe? Don't ask me. Let's just keep this information from Emma for now. Ugh. Here. Maybe you should hold on to this. Hmm. Hmm. Well, was I of any, was I any help? Of course. Thanks to your ID card, we were able to get some hard evidence. Now that's not very kind, is it? In other words, if it wasn't for his ID card, he would have been useless. Isn't that right, you and the coat? Yee! Chief Gap! We didn't think you'd be back so soon. Fortunately, I'm a man who believes in signs. As I was walking to my meeting, I happened to look out a window and saw a stray dog run right into a pole. Just then, I thought of a certain detective. Do you mean... M me sir? Now then. I'm afraid I'm gonna have to ask you all to leave. It yes sir. Sorry. Yes, it's a demon. Oh, you and the coat. Me sir? Drop off your ID on the way out. You won't be needing it anymore. But sir. Now get out. Y y yes, sir! We'll be on our way, too, then. Wait, you, the one without the spiky hair. Don't go yet. Me, sir? I'd like a word with you. 
But sir, I'm not a licensed scientific investigator yet. You, with the spiky hair, you're free to go. Mr. Wright! Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Look, pal. If I told you once, I told you a thousand times. The chief's office is off limits. But no, you had to go in sneaking in there like that, didn't you? I thought you say you didn't care anymore if you were fired. Yeah, but if I knew it'd be like this, I never would have said it. Oh, gumshoe. Now that I've seen the evidence Chief Gant was hiding in his office, I think I'm finally starting to get the picture. But why has she kept eerily silent about it all this time? He did, but it's like, unfortunately he's a cop, so he has to do what he says. Which is like, really fucked up and sus. Anyway, you listen to me? I'm gonna try to smooth things over with the chief again. Later, pal! After that, I heard from Emma. She said the police wanted to ask her some questions. So she'll be busy for the rest of the day. Okay, so they're just questioning her. She's safe. She's safe. She's safe, Ash. Don't worry. I see. So the chief asked Emma to come in for questioning. It's no use thinking about it. Tomorrow's the final day in court. I'm committed to doing everything I can to defend you, which is why I'm here. But I've already told you all I can. What you've told me over these past couple of days is absolutely nothing. Not a single useful thing. Mm -hmm. I believe I did mention I believe I did mention something quite important. Something I told you right at the beginning. I said I was the one who stabbed Detective Goodman. You know, I think I finally figured it out. I know who it is that's lurking behind your words. <laughs> Mia did a good job, Mr. I'm rather jealous. Oh, it seems Edgeworth was right. Edgeworth? Once you're convinced you know something, no one can persuade you otherwise. Thick headed is the term he used, I believe. Now is my chance to get her to tell me the rest of the story. Alright, Lana. Alright, Lana. Talk to us. I have to admit, I was more than a little perplexed at first. You insisted you did it, yet there was no incriminating evidence. That's what that's when it hit me. It's not that you're unwilling to tell the truth. It's that you're incapable of doing so because of a certain individual. What an intriguing notion. A certain individual, you say? So you think I'm protecting this person? Protecting? No, I think afraid of is more like it. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, the person in question may have persuaded you to silence. <laughs> For argument's sake, Mr. Wright. Who, may I ask, is this person you're speaking of? The one I'm supposedly so frightened of. What is this person's name? Who else? Who else? Well, this guy? Mr. Wright, you are addressing the chief prosecutor. Do not forget your place. I take it she's still not ready to spill the My apologies. Could you please tell me a bit more of what you're thinking now? We were partners until two years ago. I respected him as a detective. Assuming he is respected, then tell me something. Why would he try to hide his crimes? His crimes? Both you and Edgeworth would be brought before a board of inquiry for what you did. Specifically hiding and forging evidence. Of course, these are serious offenses. Why is it, though, that Chief Gant's name was never mentioned? Chief Gant? Edgeworth didn't know the truth behind the forgery. The only party who could have possibly tampered with the, ev the evidence was... Me. I had access because I was in second command of that investigation. Yes, you, but also one other. Damon Gant. If you intend to accuse Chief Gant, you need more than just words. Show me proof that Chief Gant falsified evidence in that case! Well, most specifically, 
I think it's that piece of cloth. Damn it. You want proof of the chief's wrongdoings? Here it is. That evidence proves someone is doing something wrong, all right. But it's not the chief. Wh who would that be? Why, you, of course. Me? Yes. You seriously believe what you're saying, don't you? Now that's scary. I, uh... You, have, you seem to have the markings of a criminal in you. What with all your fallacious ac accusations? Can you spend tonight in the cell next to mine? If you ask me, you're the scary one. We were partners until two years ago. I respected him as a detective. So they wanted to try to hide his crimes. Okay. Maybe the evidence was. I just found this in the safe in the chief's office. This jar piece and this piece of cloth. Do you know what these are? They're pieces of evidence from the SL9 incident. I. The person concealing evidence was none other than Chief Gant himself. Now tell me! Why are you taking all the blame for him? Touche, Mr. Wright. It's as if you it's as you surmised. I cannot disobey the chief's orders. Even if that means being found guilty for murder. Why not? Come now, Mr. Wright. You can't possibly expect me to tell you that. Be able to tell you that. Three days ago, I had no choice but to cooperate. In the murder of Detective Goodman. Or perhaps I should say follow orders. Yes, that's more accurate than cooperate. Although I can't tell you the details, I can say I was given an order that day. I need you to dispose of Bruce Goodman's body. You'll find it. In, you'll find it inside the trunk of Miles Ed Miles Edwards' car. Just as I suspected. Despite what everyone believes, you were not the one who murdered Detective Goodman. Correct. I was trying to take the body out of this out of Edward's car. The trunk lock was broken, and I discovered that murder weapon while inspecting the body. The murder weapon? You mean Edward's knife? No. When I found the body, this was the knife stuck in it. The knife from the SL9 incident. Serial serial killer Joe Dark's knife. I couldn't just leave that knife in him. So I took it out and stabbed him with another knife. That would be Edward's knife? That's right. Even though he was already dead, my hands were shaking at the thought of stabbing him. That's why I ended up cutting my hand. And that is the reason for the bandage on your right hand? Yes. It seems that I got blood off the victim's shoes as well. And then... She saw me just as I plunged a knife in. Knife in. The star, huh? Why did you need to hide Dark's knife so badly? It took a lot of work to find me close to Dark Case two years ago. It was over with. I didn't ever want to be. I didn't ever want it to be opened again. My intent was to prevent that. By whatever means possible. So, you hid Dark's knife. The weapon used to stab the detective was evidence in the Joe Dark case. If word got out, which it would, the reporters would have a field day with that. So you wrapped a knife in your scarf and hid it. In Edgeworth's exhaust pipe. Right. Then I called my sister. To tell her what happened and to ask her to hide the knife that was inside my muffler. You asked Emma? I didn't want anyone in the forest to know about this. That would explain why Emma is so confident. About Lana's innocence.
Speaking of phone calls, I had a bad feeling about one of them that day. A bad feeling? The truth is, after I received those orders from Chief Gant, the first thing I did was make a phone call. A phone call to Patrolman Jake Marshall. Marshall? Why on earth would you call him? The lead investigator for, S for the SL9 incident had been murdered. I wanted that fact to be kept hidden, so I, and I needed help. He was the only other person I could trust. Or at least I thought I could trust him at the time. However, it seems that after I spoke to him, he went off on an escapade of his own. Oh, you mean... Not wanting the case to die. He decided to take things into his own hands. He disguised himself as Detective Goodman and tried to steal the evidence. He had already stolen the ID card, but it seems he still hadn't made up his mind uh, to break into the evidence room. After my phone call, any remaining doubts he must have had must, must have disappeared. So your phone call caused the incident on the, in the evidence room. I'm afraid that's all I can tell you. Balana. You've earned my respect, Mr. Wright, both as a defense attorney and an investigator. Now please, don't pursue this any further in court tomorrow. Tomorrow's trial. There's only one way to drive off Lana's demons. I've got to get to the bottom of everything. Detective Goodman's real murderer. and what went down in the chief's office two years ago. Well, we got, we're gonna keep going. I told you, we're gonna finish this today. This is defendant's lobby, all right, but there's no defendant. I've been trying to reach Lana all morning. Where could she be? And where's Emma, for that matter? It's al it almost seems as if something's happening behind the scenes. Edgeworth! Knowing you, you've already figured it out. Who the owner of the 7 ID number is, that is. Well, I have a pretty strong hunch. Looks like I'm not the only one who's figured it out. You know, the only reason this child didn't reach a verdict yesterday is because there's still room for doubt regarding this ID record. If that number doesn't belong to whom you suspect, then no doubt will remain. After all, he hasn't been officially charged with anything. True. Not yet. In any event, once all doubt has been removed from that list, I can call for a ruling. Five minutes, right? And the Chief Prosecutor Sky will be found guilty. But she didn't do it! I figured I figured you say as much. That's why I came here. To hear what you have to say. This is the first time he's ever done something like this. Lana's hiding something, and the only way we'll ever know the truth is to draw it out of her. The truth? Everything goes back to the SL9 incident. Don't be stupid. Today's the last day of the trial. We don't have time to reminisce about the past. That depends on you. If she's found guilty, you lo you'll lose your, lo your only chance to find out what really happened. I'll think about it. See you in court, right? This is it. If I'm ever going to find out what Chief Gant has on her, it's now. All right. It's the last day of the trial, you guys. A lot of shit's gonna go down. Court is now in session for the child of Miss Lana Sky. The defense is ready, Your Honor. 
The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. Normally, this is when the prosecution puts forth its opening statement. Hmm? But before that, the police chief has a proposal to make. Chief Gann. Morning, folks. How's everyone doing? Hey, Aji. Been back to the pool yet? No, I've been drowning enough as it is in my work. Oh, that's a good one. Don't think I could top that. If you don't mind me asking, Chief, exactly what is this proposal of yours? Lana. That is to say, the defendant has asked me if she could speak directly to the court. She wants to do what? Having heard what she intends to say, I feel she should be granted her request. In the end, it should save everyone a lot of time and trouble. What's this all about, defendant? I'd just like to make one simple request and I'll be finished. Well then, what's your request? Your Honor, I'd like you to put an immediate end to this trial. Huh? I confess to all charges against me. On February 21st of this year, I murdered Detective Bruce Goodman in the underground parking lot of the prosecutor's office. No, Lana! Lana, what are you doing? You can't. Your Honor, the defendant's claim does not change the defense's plea. In that case, Mr. Wright, I no longer require your services. But Lana! Your Honor, I hereby forfeit my right to an attorney. The prosecution may lack direct evidence against me. But it has sufficiently proven its case through testimony and circumstantial evidence. I would like to render your verdict now, if you please. Hmm, well, the defendant certainly has the right to self-representation. Her request is legally valid, although this is an unprecedented situation. Indeed, it appears that there is no further need to continue this trial, even if Mr. Wright may feel otherwise. This can't be happening! It appears that the time for the verdict has arrived. This court finds the defendant... One moment, Your Honor. M Mr. Edgeworth? The prosecution has not yet proven the defendant guilty beyond reasonable doubt. Any ruling at this stage would, be cert would certainly be premature. Come now, Worthy. I understand this is a difficult time for you, but why don't you just be a good little boy and keep your mouth shut, hmm? Hmm. I don't think I care for your tone. Chief Gant. Who what? Creating another fabrication to cover up your past mistakes? Sorry, but I'm no longer the naive little boy you would have me be. With this sudden confession from the defendant, it's obvious to me some kind of deal was struck behind the scenes. Some kind of deal, hmm? Not everyone operates as you do, worthy. Hmm. I thought so. Your Honor, <laughs> with all due respect, eat my shorts, sir. <laughs> yeah, basically. Your Honor, the prosecution would like to change its first witness. Oh, to who? As its first witness, the prosecution would like to call Miss Emma Skye. I request the court hears her testimony. Mr. Edgeworth, I'm exercising my right to self-representation. I don't think we need to get to I don't care what you think, Miss Sky. <gasps> the exposure of truth sometimes results in tragedy. However, no matter how tragic the truth may be, it would be an even greater tragedy to avert one's eyes to from it. Very well. The court shall grant the prosecution's request. That's okay with you, right, Chief Gant? Worthy. You'll live to regret this. Mark my words. Miss Emma Skye, please take to please take the stand. Looks like Edward has decided to take the horse by the reins. Alright, Emma, what do you gotta say? Now then, witness, please state your name and occupation. 
Um, my name is Emma, Emma Sky. My occupation, I'm Lana's little sister, and I want to be a scientific investigator. Two years ago, you encountered the serial killer Joe Dark of the Joe Dark Killings. Is this correct? Yes. I'm trying my hardest to forget about that, though. I'm sorry, but I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to recall those ev events one more time. Mr. Edgeworth, please remember this trial concerns the murder of Detective Goodman. Is an incident that it was resolved two years ago really all that re relevant? Yes, it most certainly is. W well, okay then. He sure gave in fast. Now, now, please testify about what happened to you two years ago. The trip to yesteryear has finally begun. It's bound to lead to the truth behind this trial. Alright, Emma. I was waiting in my sister's office that day. A man came running in and took me hostage. Neil Marshall rescued me. But I'll never forget what I saw in that instant. The man raised his knife and, and stabbed Mr. Marshall in the chest. It's a good thing you weren't harmed. I passed out. I don't remember much. That's understandable. However, Please tell me, Mr. Edgeworth, what does this testimony have to do with Detective Goodman's murder? That will soon become apparent, Your Honor. You've got to admire him for his courage, considering he has no evidence. Very well, the defense may begin its cross-examination. Two years ago, the defendant was a detective at the police department, correct? Yes, she was second in command of the deputy chief of police, Gant. Yeah. My sister, she was the best detective ever! Yes, I remember. Deputy Chief Gant and Miss Sky used to be quite the pair. I believe they shared the same office. That's right! I'd always sit in my sister's desk. And dream about playing that organ. I wanted to play it that day too. The police department and the prosecutor's office held a ceremony that day. Lana promised to take me to dinner after she finished her work. A man? Yes, Joe Dark. He was a, a serial killer. Joe Dark was brought in for questioning on the day of that ceremony. We were desperate to get anything on him that would lead to an arrest. When he saw his chance, he fled the room, right? Upon fleeing the room, Dark proceeded to take the elevator. He must have been in a panic because the elevator was going up. Then he ran into Sky and Gant's office. There was a lot of noise coming from outside, so I... I opened the door to have a look. That's when I saw... him... What was the prosecutor doing there? That day, there were two people present during the Dark's questioning. Deputy Chief Damon Grant and Prosecutor Neil Marshall. Almost forgot about Gant. Neil Marshall had just received the King of Prosecutors Award. Young and dedicated, he went straight to the, straight to the questioning room after the ceremony. I assume that would also be why he was the first to run after Dark. When Dark grabbed me, I, I thought I was as good as dead. And that's when Prosecutor Marshall came running in. I, I don't clearly remember what happened then, but... Can you tell us about that? Mr. Marshall just, uh, Mr. Marshall jumped on Dark and then, just then, the lights went out. The lights? It was just about this time of year. There was a terrible storm going on and lightning struck nearby. So the electricity went out. 
Wait a minute. If it was pitch dark in that room, you shouldn't have been able to see anything, right? Right, but just then lightning flashed again outside. That sudden flash left an unforgettable image of the scene in my mind. I see. I told the detective about what I saw then. The detective? Yes, Detective Goodman. He was in charge of the case. Detective Bruce Goodman, the victim. Let's hear more. So you spoke with Detective Goodman about this. Two years ago. Yes, that's what's so scary about this trial. And you told Detective Goodman about what you saw? Yes, but at the time, the words just couldn't want it, just wouldn't come out. That's why I drew a picture. A picture? Yes, I think she's mentioned that before. Well, Mr. Wright, have you heard enough? Ask about the picture. This picture the witness drew. I believe it has a very important meaning. But the list of evidence I was given two years ago didn't contain a picture. Witness, would you mind if we added this statement to your testimony? Yes, Your Honor. Hmm. I drew a picture once of that scene once, but it seems to have been lost. Wait, we did find a picture on the evidence. Picture is drawn. On the back of the evidence is in magic marker. I've got a very bad feeling about this. But we gotta. We gotta, you know? Objection! Mr. Edgeworth. This little girl put all her heart into drawing that picture. And yet you would insist on denying its existence? Huh? Hey, I'm not the bad guy. All I'm saying is that as the prosecutor for that case, I wasn't handed such a picture. That may well be. But that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Behold! This is the evidence list for the SL9 incident? Please turn it over, Your Honor. Turn it over? Turn it... Ah! What's this? Yes. What is that? Hey, that's it! That's the picture I drew! Now, to be honest, Emma's a pretty good artist. Indeed. Two men appear to be wrestling here. What's the meaning of this? What are you doing with that list? Me? Only the prosecutor in charge should have had access to that list. Huh? These lists. They're... They're different from each other. What? It would appear, Mr. Edgeworth, that the evidence list that you were handed two years ago was incomplete. These two lists fit together to form one. You can see the marks here where they were torn apart from each other. So you see, Mr. Edgeworth, it's quite obvious what happened. Two years ago, only half of the evidence in the case that only half of the evidence in that case ever reached you. What? What? Order, order! But Miss Skye, why did you draw your picture on the back of such an important list? Because that's what Miss, that's what Detective Goodman handed me in the question room, Your Honor. Wait a minute. If this list was torn in half, then that means... Your Honor! Are you alright, Mr. Wright? Your eyes are bulging from your head. Oh no, was this a hint to Apollo? If the evidence list was torn in half, then there might be more of a drawing there might be more of the drawing on the back of Mr. Edward's list. Ugh. Yes, that's quite conceivable, Mr. Edward. It is possible. Let's see. 
Is something wrong? Do you even have to ask? Sorry, Your Honor. There is indeed something wrong with the back of my head. Oh no. What is it that you see, Edgeworth? It's that, that thing. Hey. It's the blue badger. That's, that's that, that thing. That thing that was dancing in the evidence room. Clearly, this act of vandalism is the work of a certain chief of detectives. I guess he was out of scrap paper? <laughs> so now we've restored it. Very well. Witness, will you please testify about this picture you drew two years ago? Huh? Oh, y yes, sir, your honor. What's wrong with Emma? She seemed to be thinking about something when she was looking at the picture. Hmm, what are your thoughts, Emma? This is the picture that... I drew, this is the picture I drew two years ago. The flash of lightning was so bright, all I could see were shadows. After that, I must have fainted. This picture shows exactly what I saw in that instant. To think, a flash of lightning could burn such an image in your mind. Thanks to that, though, she was able to show us exactly what she saw. Well, I don't see any contradictions here. This clearly shows Joe Dark about shows do this clearly shows Joe Dark about to murder prosecutor Neil Marshall. The defense may not begin its cross examination. question about Neil's autopsy because he said it says here single stab wound piercing heart and lung a single stab wound so what the heck I hate to be the bearer of bad news but this picture the witness drew contains a blatant, con blatant contradiction what? But, but I still remember it like it was just yesterday. Mr. Wright, perhaps it would be faster if you simply pointed out this contradiction for us. What part of this picture contradicts the autopsy report? Ooh. Maybe the weapon. Because I don't think maybe... Contradiction, of course, lies here. Take a look at the knife at, at the knife the man is holding. If you look closely, you can see its tip is broken. Even I don't have to look closer to see that, Mr. Wright. But Mr. Wright, look at the evidence. See the murder weapon? Its tip is broken too. If I recall, the tip of the knife was found broken off in the victim's body. It was a conclusive piece of evidence that proved Joe Dark was the murderer. I'm afraid it's not so simple, Emma. And where, pray tell, could you possibly see a problem? It's obvious, really. The victim suffered a single stab wound to the back. If the victim almost only stabbed once, then the murder weapon should not yet be broken. Ah! What's the meaning of this? Perhaps the knife was broken beforehand. Sorry, but I'm afraid that's not possible. The tip of the knife was found inside the victim's body. If it was broken beforehand, it couldn't, it couldn't possibly wind up there. That's right. But what does this mean? The tip of the knife was undeniably discovered within the victim's body. The only possible explanation is the witness's memory is mistaken. No, it's not. That's why I asked her so many times if she was sure she remembered correctly. I believe you were annoyed at the time. 
but she was sure she remembered correctly. But there's no other way to explain this inconsistency. Not so fast, Mr. Edgeworth. There is another explanation. Have you forgotten already? About a little something called falsified evidence? You're treading on thin ice, right? All I'm saying is that this broken knife tip might be the piece of evidence that was forged. You can't deny the possibility. No. Urgh! Order, order, order! Are you saying the investigation was really corrupted? Your honor, please allow me to once again to go over the events that took place on the day of the murder. The day of the murder. The police department and the prosecutor's office were holding a ceremony that day. After receiving the King of Prosecutors Award at the ceremony, Neil Marshall questioned Joe Dark along with Damon Gant. During his questioning, Joe Dark fled the room. Prosecutor Marshall clashed, chased after him and was killed by Dark. It is my belief that somewhere in the story, there is a lie. Hmm. I... I'm not lying. The man was really holding up a broken knife! If that's true, then there's no other way around it. This could not have been the actual murder weapon. Uh, there must have been another broken knife. What are the chances of there being two broken knives? Another broken knife besides Joe Dark. Could there have been one? No, there is another one. If the witness is this adamant about the accuracy of what she saw, then it can't just be explained away by a simple observational error. Mr. Wright. Mr. Wright. In that instant, Emma really did see a broken knife. But just... Stop the one they think it is. Oh, oh, I assume then. Did you have some information about this other broken knife? If so, please feel free to enlighten us. The murder weapon was already broken prior to the murder. There's only one way. Take a look at this. Here is the real murder weapon. Let's check this before. Because remember, the halberd is already broken. And they just had the ceremony. So what else could it have been? The answer lies in the past. Two years in the past. Right here inside this picture. This is a picture of the war ceremony. This is a picture of the war ceremony. Ah! Uh, ah! What is it, Mr. Edward? It's the broken murder weapon. Notice the award Prosecutor Marshall is holding. That's a broken knife! As we early concluded, the knife in the drawing was not Joe Dark's knife. That being the case, the knife the witness saw was, the, was in all likelihood from this award. Order! 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 Neil Marshall was awarded King of Prosecutors that day. As an award, he was given this broken shield and knife. When he chased after Joe Dark, he pulled out he pulled out this knife. Being a prosecutor, he did not carry a pistol. This broken knife was the only weapon he had in this dangerous situation. But that that can't be. Oh, and why not, Mr. Edgeworth? Because if the King of Prosecutors and War Knife was the murder weapon, then the murderer and the victim would be reversed. What do you mean? I mean, this man raising a knife would have been Prosecutor Neil Marshall. Oh. Oh! But the prosecutor was the one who actually died. That's true. What's going on here? It seems Mr. Wright has been a bit too eager to jump to the to has been a bit too eager to jump to conclusions. Wait, I... I remember now! I remember everything! Witness? Mr. Edgeworth! 
What is it? Could you show me your evidence list again, please? His list? The one with that picture scribbled on the back? I knew it. This picture. I'm the one who drew it. What? You drew that? That's right. The list was torn in half at the time I drew this picture. All this time, I've been trying so hard to forget. I must have locked this part away deep inside of me. Deep inside me. Perhaps it would be best if we added this to the witness's testimony. Would you please tell us what you recall, Miss Sky? Yes, Your Honor. First the knife mix-up, and now the blue badger? This should be interesting. <laughs> When I saw that man raise his knife, I panicked and rushed toward both of them. I think I... I knocked away the man with the knife. Just then there was another flash of lightning, and that's when I saw the blue badger. He wasn't in the room, but I'm sure I saw his shadow. This is certainly most unusual. Objection. Try impossible. The chief of detectives hadn't even designed him until this year. That would mean he didn't even exist two years ago. Yes, well, the defense may not be against cross-examination. Stop! Please, don't pursue this any further! Lana, what's the meaning of this? Please remain seated in the defendant's chair. But you can't do this. I've already confessed to the crime. Why can't you just leave it at that? Five nights at the prosecutor's office, am I right? <laughs> right? Yeah, right? Chief Prosecutor Scott. Uh, we've already come this far. It's too late to turn back. Silence. The defense will now begin its cross-examination. Bailiff, please detain the defendant. It seems we're finally getting to the core of the matter. Okay, wait, though, so, hold on. If you move it a certain way, the jar has no bottom, so the hole goes right through. I wonder if it's really a jar or some kind of weird telescope. The mysterious blue badger was, in fact, this. But that's... Er, what exactly is that? I believe it's some sort of jar. But, Mr. Wright, that doesn't look anything like the blue badger. Indeed, it doesn't. As it stands now, it's just a plain jar. However, what if we were to change our viewpoint? Our viewpoint? I've got to show them. The correct angle to look like this from. This is gonna be tough. Wait, unless... No. Hold on. I know... Oh! I kind of see it. Do you guys see it? Oh, yeah, that's right. I have to. I'm glad they actually had the picture because before they they didn't have it before. So this is it's 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 good. Uh, let me make sure that it's this one's kind of funky to do. 
And you gotta get like a very, very, almost like a very specific angle. <laughs> it cranks. So it's like this. I think I need something that makes it go. Who was in charge of this? I say that's about right. Let's score it. This is it right. Come on, Mr. Right, you can do it. Okay, so that wasn't it. Okay, um, why do they do it? This should not be this hard to do, to be honest. Ugh, they feel like they made it extra hard on this one for some reason. Alright, so I think it might be like that. Uh, oh. Yes, yes, Edgeworth. I didn't mean to hit that button. God damn it. Okay, so at least this time. I wish there was a way to, like, reset it. Okay, so I need to go down. I'm not gonna... Okay, so it's like... This, so let's turn around. Has it? Oh, wait. I think this is about right. No, I don't think so. Let's move up. I think this is as close as it's gonna get. No, seriously? I hate these kind of puzzles where you got to get like the exact like fucking thing. It's so fucking finicky. I hate this. Okay, so. No, this way. No, it needs to be the other way. that look to you guys? Eh, fuck it, I'll try it. Did we do it? We did it! Finally! Oh god damn, that was, that was a pain in the ass. I forgot how much of a pain in the ass that part was. Well, is this a miracle or what? No one can possibly deny this jar's resemblance to the Boo Badger. Ugh. I'll be back. I gotta be your bee again.
Right. Sorry about that. Hopefully the blue badge will keep you guys entertained. No one can possibly deny this giant resemblance to the blue badger. No. It can't be. Order. Order. Defense has proven its claim. The mysterious blue badger witnessed on the day of this crime of the crime was actually this. Objection! Although we enjoyed Mr. Wright's dramatic performance, one question remains. What's your point? What do you mean? So that badger thing was actually just a jar. That doesn't change anything. Objection! I'm afraid that's where you're wrong, Mr. Edgeworth. You see. This changes everything. Indeed. Very well then. Please tell us. What's different now that we know the witness saw the star? The location. Allow me to take these in turn. At the moment of the murder, the witness saw the star. At a very specific angle, I might add, Mr. Wright. Yes, well knowing this where she could knowing this, where could she have seen this jar? Where? The location of the jar is shown in the picture taken on the day of the crime. It's on the shelf in the office of Damon Gant. But the body was found lying near Lana Sky's desk. The witness testified so herself. Yes, and it's, it is these two facts to reveal what actually transpired. You see, the struggle between Dark and Marshall did not take place in Lana Sky's office. It happened on the other side of the room, in Chief Gant's office. Are you implying the murderer moved the victim's body? From Dan and Gant's office to Lana Sky's office? Yes. Why would he do that? There's no reason. Exactly. Oh. If there if there wasn't a reason, he wouldn't have gone through the trouble. The only logical conclusion is that there was a reason. Do you know what that reason was, Mr. Wright? I finally figured it out. So this is why Lana tried to stop the trial. It's too late to quit now, though. Please recall the witness's testimony. She says she knocked away the man who was holding up the knife. In the next instant, the jar was hit and flew through the air. Now tell me, what could have sent the jar flying? That would have to have been the impact the man, the man made when he was knocked into the wall? Ladies and gentlemen, if I may draw your attention to this picture once more. If the man was knocked into the direction of the shelf the jar was sitting on, what would he have hit? Ah! Ah! ah the suit of armor! Holding a very sharp and dangerous looking sword. Yes. I actually need to go look at that. I don't think I... Oh! Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see that bad boy sticking out? Oh, yeah. Yes. And since the man who was knocked into the armor was carrying a broken knife, he would have had he would have had to have been Neil Marshall wielding the King of Prosecutors trophy. No. Mr. Wright, you can't be thinking. Yes. There is another possibility of what actually transpired in that room. Another possibility? Of course, the perpetrator would have no would have had no idea, but nevertheless. I I don't know if I could go through with this. Mr. Wright, what's the matter? If the events took place as the defense theorizes, then the outcome is obvious. In that moment, assuming the man and the sky knocked away was actually professor, pr prosecutor, what? professor, prosecutor Neil Marshall.
Mr. Marshall died because of me? No! Oh, she fainted. I never imagined her testimony would lead to this. So it was the witness who took the victim's life, and then proved so with her own testimony. This is unprecedented! What? What are you saying? I'm sorry, Miss Sky, but given the circumstances, Joe Dark murdered Prosecutor Marshall! How can you think it was Emma? How dare you try to pin the crime on her? Imagine that coming from you. <laughs> if you recall, it was you who admitted to forging evidence two years ago. The reason you moved to pro move pro the reason you moved Prosecutor Marshall's body was to keep anyone else from finding about what Emma did, wasn't it? I assure you, Mr. Edward, I have no idea what you're talking about. If you have to, if you have hope to have anyone believe your insane allegations, I'm afraid you're going to have to have proof. Tell me. Do you have any conclusive evidence that proves my sister killed Neil Marshall? E evidence? I'm willing to bet you don't. Yes. Yes, it certainly would be difficult to prove this with, with evidence. If we don't have evidence, then we'll have to rely on testimony. I'm afraid that won't work in this case. Both parties involved in the case, both parties involved in the incident are dead. We certainly can't get dead people to testify. This has to be, this has been this has all been a wild goose chase from the beginning. Hmm. Touche, Miss Sky. Of course. That only leaves us with one possibility. Oh, you mean there's still another possibility? What do you mean, Mr. Edward? I mean the possibility that the victim has left us a message. For better or for worse, Mr. Marshall did not die instantly. He may have left behind the name of the person who took his life. In one manner or another. That's... that's impossible. Well, Mr. Wright, this is the only possibility left to you. A message from the deceased. Does such a message exist? I've got to think back to the court record. The real murderer's name and the victim may have been left behind is in the evidence. This message from the deceased is already in our possession. Mr. Wright, will you stop at nothing to prove, to prove my sister a murderer? Do not be mistaken, Miss Guy. <laughs> our purpose is not to accuse Emma of any crime. There is only one thing we seek. The truth. No matter how painful it may be. Now then, Mr. Wright. Please show, the, show us the piece of evidence that conveys the message for the, from the deceased. Because think about it too. The met these uh, uh, the blood spider on here. This is the message left by the deceased. This is that blue badger from before, right? Oh, is he gonna speak on the? Oh, is he just going? Is he going to just speak the killer's name? If that thing could, I'm sure it would. Looks like everyone's forgotten this is just a jar. A message was left there on the surface of this jar. What do you mean? If you look closely, you can see a faint trail of blood on this jar. It looks like someone wiped the blood away. Yes, but notice, for some reason, the blood of some, on some of the fragments was not wiped away. Yes, there's a line here, drawn in blood. So what do you see? Is these dots were once lined? Prosecutor Marshall did not die instantly. He used a few precious moments left to, left to him to leave behind a message. <laughs> One that someone apparently wiped away. But blood must have seeped into the jar where the lines changed directions. Precisely so. 
all we need to do is connect these points. And the victim's message will become apparent. No. Mr. Wright, what kind of message did the victim leave for us? Your Honor, I believe these bloodstains will reveal to us the answer. I've got to connect these dots to make the letter. There's only one thing the victim would have ri written given the circumstances. His murderer's name. Okay, there it goes. These are so finicky. It's a defense attorney's duty to prove their client's innocence. That's why all I've been thinking about is saving Lana. After all my efforts, I never thought it would turn out like this. Emma. So this is the final message Prosecutor Marshall left behind. Of all people. She may not have meant it, but in the end, the one who took the victim's life was Emma Sky. Seaworthy? Can't say I didn't warn you. There he is, Ash, your mortal enemy, Chief Gan. Do you understand the implications of what you've done? What? What are you talking about? Two years ago, Joe Dark was sentenced to death. He was convicted because of his final murder. I believe you were the prosecutor in the case, were you not? I- Yes, Worthy. Because of you, an innocent man was sentenced to death. Not only that, but you used forged evidence to ensure his conviction. But Joe Dark really was a serial murderer. That's undeniable. I'm afraid that's not important. Didn't you know? We aren't defenders of justice. What? We are merely keepers of the law. Sentencing a man to death is no light matter. Even if there wasn't any cover-up or evidence forgery, ultimately, the responsibility of life falls to the prosecutor in charge. <laughs> Despite what anyone may say, this fact cannot be denied. What's going on at the prosecutor's office? They might have sent an innocent man to his death. How can he just stand there like it was his, it was his fault? Order, 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 order! The gavel's pounding fell on deaf ears. Unable to settle the crowd, the judge declared a recess. Where, where this trial is headed, no one knows. Ooh, Lana gonna be pissed at us! But we have our reasons. Let's put a save. Sorry, Edward. I didn't mean to get you in trouble. Hm. Don't worry about it. This is my problem, not yours. Hope I'm not interrupting anything, pals. 
Oh, guess I am. I'll come back later. Wait, Detective Gumshoe, what is it? You've got a lot of nerve, pal! Making a detective run around while on duty? And to top it all off, you call me here? I've seen happier people at funerals. I take it Lana's having you run errands again. Let me tell you, this is the last time, pal. Here, she asked me to give this to you if there was a break in today's trial. Evidence hall? I just was just was talking about this about this just the other day. You must know the two rules of evidence law. Rule one: No evidence shall be shown without the approval of the police department. It, is that right, Mr. Wright? It seems so. You could at least study some evidence law. Really? The chief prosecutor also wanted me to give you a message. A message? She said, if you're planning to take him on, you're going to need this book. Him. I guess I'll need to give this book a thorough read. Nope. Well, let's check it out anyway. Rule one. No evidence shall be shown without the approval of the police department. Rule two. Unregistered evidence presented must be relevant to the case on trial. Hmm. <laughs> you gotta keep this, you gotta remember this, you guys. Doesn't look like that book will do you any good now, though. All that's left now is the chief prosecutor's sentence. That's where you're wrong, detective. Huh? Haven't you figured it out yet? Why am I still sitting in that prosecutor's seat? Despite all of these allegations being thrown at me? Mr. Edgeworth. The real trial today hasn't begun yet. What? What else is there left to do? Your credibility's been all but ruined with this forged evidence you were unaware of? And the sky found that she unwillingly caused a man's death? And now you're telling me you want to do more? You've gotta be kidding me, pal! You're missing the point, detective. Lana didn't murder Detective Goodman. Ugh. She merely stuck a knife into his dead body. That means the real killer is still out there. What? And we're going to expose him. No matter what it takes. This case has hurt too many people. It's time to bring it to an end. Court will now reconvene for the trial of Miss Lana Sky. Mr. Edgeworth. Yes, Your Honor. The inquiry committee is planning to impose harsh penalties for your actions. Thank you for the news, Your Honor. Y yes, well, <clears throat> normally this is where the prosecution calls forth a witness, but er, <clears throat> this isn't easy to say. You see, there is some concern that you, Mr. Edgeworth, may have had, uh, struck a bargain. <sighs> you think I may have manipulated the witnesses? I didn't say that! It's just, you see, everyone has been talking, and... Very well, Your Honor. I have a solution. A solution? That being the case, the prosecution will allow the defense to call forth all further witnesses. What? But there's no precedent for what you're proposing. Undeniably, this is an unusual arrangement, but a very effective one. It would prove that I haven't stu struck any deals with the witnesses. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you say? Unbelievable. Edward ha Edgewood has found a way to continue the trial. Very well. The defense accepts the prosecution's proposal. That is settled. The, uh, defense may now call forth this next witness. Mr. Wright. <laughs> you do realize this is your last chance. If you call the wrong witness, this trial is as good as over. The defense calls... The time's finally come to... Finally attempt to bring up the real murderer. It's Meekins! No, I'm kidding. It's not him. It's Steven. 
Damon Gant. The defense calls Damon Gant to the stand. The, the Damon Gant? What does he have to do with anything? As the defendant's partner two years ago, Mr. Gant has first-hand knowledge of the crime. I feel like you should hear what he has to say about it. Get ready to face your mortal enemy once, once more, Ash. As luck would have it, he should, see, should still be in the courthouse. He would also be the least likely to have been manipulated by me in any way. Wouldn't you agree, Your Honor? True. <laughs> You're gonna pull out your gun. Alright, Bailiff, please escort Mr. Gant to the stand. There he is. Witness, please state your name of occupation. Ooh, what is this? Some kind of practical joke? I was just on my way to lunch. Your name and occupation, sir. Worthy? Are you sure you want to do this? Your name and occupation! So, you want to play hardball, eh? But please, Mr. Gant. Fine. My name is Damon Gant. I'm the acting chief of police. Now then, Chief Gant, the court requests to hear your testimony. Ho, oh, Raito, what's with the grim face? First, let's clear up this SL9 incident. Oh, you mean that time when Lana's sister murdered that prosecutor? Personally, I think it's been made pretty clear already. There are still some things unaccounted for. Oh, like what? Like the role you played in all of this. Son, either you're very brave or very foolish. You are aware, of course, that a police chief has all kinds of weapons at his disposal. Weapons? Sure. Take my testimony, for example. I don't have to get it if I don't want to. What? Is that true? I'm afraid so. The chief of police has the right to refuse to testify. Of course, such an action carries with it certain risks. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not here to hinder your trial. Just remember, if this turns out to be a big waste of time, don't say I didn't warn you. Very well, the witness may now begin his testimony. Alright. As I recall, Neil and I were questioning him that day. To make it a long to make a long story short, we slipped up. The power outage didn't help either. When I went to my office, I found Lana there. Apparently she had already arranged a crime scene. As you can see, I had nothing to do with the forgery. Do you though? Hmm, is that when Dark was arrested? Him? He was lying on the floor unconscious. When Emma sent Neil flying, it seemed Dark bumped his head. I see. Everything seems pretty clear cut. If the police chief has the right to refuse to testify, then I'd better hit him hard and fast. It's a... Let's see. Okay. But what about the evidence list? Why was that in your... Why was the evidence list on your desk then? You claim you had nothing to do with the forgery. But I'm afraid that's a claim you cannot back up. Explain yourself. Several pieces of evidence were found in your office. Take this list, for example. That's the list of the sky drew on her, her picture on. This was discovered in your desk. Not only that, but a piece of the star that was sitting in your office was found inside your safe. It was found where? You see, Chief Kent, 
These articles of evidence and cutlery in your office are both concrete proof that you also played a part in the illegal investigation. Chief Gant, what's the meaning of this? Oh, here's a defense attorney who may even rival Worthy. So you admit to it then, that you were involved in the forgery. Who, me? Or do you mean you? Me? Why would I have anything to do with that? Well, you were the one who stuck it to my office when you found this evidence. <laughs> Prosecutors aren't the only ones capable, capable of forging evidence, you know. Defense attorneys can do so too. Isn't that right, right though? However, Detective Gumshoe was present during the investigation. Worthy, my boy. Not even detectives are exempt from the law. Rest assured, Dick will receive his due punishment. Wh what? If Detective Gumshoe's salary drops any further, he'll end up paying to work. Yes, well, in light of the, detecti of the detective's presence, please give us what your testimony regarding these pieces of evidence found in your own... And found in your office, and in relation to the forgery that took place at the crime scene. My, my. Kids these days no longer know how to put two and two together. Confirm, Damon is a boomer. Let's see, what was it now? A jar, fragment, and a list? For all I, mean, for all I know, you could have planted them in my office. Anyways, you can't prove when those pieces of evidence were discovered. If they were found after Dark was convicted, then they're worthless. There's no reason I'd participate in a forgery. Rearranging the crime scene would've, wouldn't help me out in any way. Hmm, Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor? When investigating the crime scene, you should have been more careful to observe protocol. He do understand that I am the chief of police, right? There will be consequences. Ooh. Indeed, I believe I will. I believe I will press charges, so you won't make that same mistake again. My apologies, chief, but it, but would you mind waiting until tomorrow for that? Today is well, you know. All right, Edgy. In return, though. I know, I know, that place, right? Huh? What are these guys? Telepathic? No, they're on a date. But, wait. Rearranging the crime scene? Nobody said anything about that. Really, Chica? At the very least, there is one very large benefit you've reaped from all of this. Oh, I wasn't aware. What is this benefit? That would, of course, be the position you have. Chief of Police. Oh. The resolution of the SL9 incident secured your promotion to Chief. That in itself is sufficient motive. Ho, ho, ho. Oh, that's a... Ho, 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 ho. That's a good one. Huh? Do you really think I'm that incompetent? What do you mean? Even without that case, I was already in line to become the next chief. The resolution of SL9 nearly sped, the, sped up the inevitable a little. Jail time. <laughs> Is that true, Edgeworth? Yes. You was going to be made chief anyway. Gah! Be careful with pointing that finger. Or you might be in the one... Might... You might wind up being the one pointed at. So that means there is only one possible possible motive for you to commit foraging. If you didn't do it for yourself, then you did it for someone else. But don't be silly, Worthy. You know me better than that. There are only three people I look out for. Me, myself, and I. There, it's all in the open now. Aji, would you mind if I change my testimony a little? By all means, please do. 
I wouldn't be anyone's accomplice if there was something in it for me. Hmm. Explain yourself. Nothing in it for you? Sorry, but the only person I care about is yours truly. That girl. Lana's little sister, was it? If you think I felt sorry for her, you'd better think again. You're right. You don't feel for, you don't feel sorry for anyone. Be tough on crime and tough on people. That's how I was raised. You seem to be lax enough on yourself, though. Ho! Ho 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 ho! Oh, that's a good one, Worthy. Hmm. Could there have been something in it for him? Given his selfishness, would he have helped someone out? Yes! True, you may not help out anyone for their sake. But if it would benefit you, you might decide to assist someone. Yes, because he's basically blackmailing Lana. Because... Mr. Wright, it appears you're positively determined to portray the chief as a nice man who likes to lend a hand to people. Oh, Aji! That's not what I mean. Very well, then. Who is this person you believe Chief Gant may have helped to forge evidence? Chief Prosecutor Lana Sky, the, the defendant? I believe it's quite obvious in the light of the circumstances. Emma Sky fell victim to an unfortunate series of events. Who would want to help her more than her own sister Lana? And as for Chief Gant, he would also have a reason to help Lana if she asked him to. That reason, of course, is self-profit. Self-profit? What do you mean? After the SL9 incident was resolved, Lana Sky was appointed chief prosecutor at the prosecutor's office. The person who arranged this job change was you, Chief Gant. But, but how would he profit from all of this? He would be able to use the chief prosecutor as his puppet. Essentially, he would acquire unchecked authority over all investigators in all investigations. Do you mean to tell me that despite the chief's formidable appearance, he plays with puppets? Aji! Oh, wait. You must mean puppet as if someone forced to do his bidding. Never mind. Admit it, chief. You assist at Lana Sky in forging evidence. Your motive, to appoint her as chief prosecutor so you can control her. Right, oh my boy. You have quite imagination. Let me ask you something. What? Do you have any proof of this? That I controlled Mana? The judge went to school, right? He did. He's just he's just a silly boomer. We still love him. For example, is Lana testifying that I've done such a thing? Lana, she's keeping quiet to protect Emma. There's no way she testified against Gant. I'm afraid without any proof, this all amounts to nothing more than mere conjecture. <laughs> Unless, that is also what happened in this incident. This incident? Er, which one would that be? Of course, I'm talking about the murder of Detective Bruce Goodman. The chief prosecutor has been acting strange throughout this trial, entire trial. Almost as if someone has been controlling her. Just for you, Ash, you get a treat. Worthy, you better watch your tongue. I wouldn't want you to get hurt. Just what do you mean? What he means, Your Honor, is that Chief Gant is involved in the murder of Detective Goodman. Not only that, but the Chief is now making Lana take the rap to cover up his involvement. 
Wha wha what? Order, order, order. I said order. Mr. Wright, you, you, you can't be serious. Huh? This... This is an affront to the highest ranking officer in our law enforcement agency. To accuse chief of police of blackmail and murder? That's impossible! Your Honor, I was merely reiterating what Mr. Edgar said in an easier to understand language. It's too late, Mr. Wright. <sighs> There's no turning back for us now. It looks like he's the one who's decided to go through with this. Can you prove this, Mr. Wright? That the chief, a high-ranking officer of the law, is involved with this murder? <sighs> Good question. Yes, we can. We can. Regardless of his rank or title, Chief Gant is just a man. The question is, is he a criminal? I believe the evidence will tell. I see. Alright then. I know exactly what it is. Let's see what Mr. Wright got, and it better be good. Show us this evidence that ties Chief Kent to the murder of Detective Goodman. Very easy. The evidence room. This is the ID card list. Yes, the one that shows who entered the evidence room on the day of the crime. There is one ID on the list that we couldn't determine the owner of yesterday. The sevens. Sorry, but there's no way you can prove that. Sorry, but there's no way you can prove that's my card number. It's your number. <laughs> what? How do you know that? The safe in Chief Gant's office requires a code to open. A seven digit code. Seven digits. You don't mean. I'm afraid so, Your Honor. The code was all these sevens. The same as the remaining ID card number on that list. Chief Gant. You entered the evidence room on the day of the crime. That Zeus when Hera ca catches him again with another human girl. Order! Order! Chief Gant, what do you have to say? Nothing. The defense... The defense is searching my office was in violation of regulations. And I will demand Mr. Wright to be punished to the maximum extent of the law. But right now this court demands an explanation from you. About the use of this ID card. <sighs> Chief Gant, so you admit it? You admit it. You agree. You agree that you committed a crime. You entered the evidence room on the day of the crime. <sighs> what about it? I'm chief of police. Whether it's the evidence room or the bathroom, what's the difference? I can go anywhere I want. Tell me, when you entered the room, were you alone? I always go to the bathroom alone, as I do with the evidence room. Detective Goodman wouldn't have had to be with you that day, wouldn't he? Uh, of course not. Why wouldn't he be? Why would he be? I hadn't seen him in days. You hadn't seen him in days? Chief Gant. I'm afraid you just undone yourself. On that day, you have to have met with Detective Goodman. What do you mean? This child's purpose is to determine Lana Sky's guilt. No, it isn't, Your Honor. This child's purpose is to determine the truth. If Chief Gant met the victim on the day of the crime, then we need to determine one thing. What transpired during that meeting? 
In that case, Mr. Wright, I'm going to have to ask you for evidence. Show us proof that the victim went to meet Chief Gat on the day of the crime. Yes, we can. Where is it? The fact that he had his ID stolen because he had to go in and get the evidence. Detective Goodman lost his ID card on the day of the crime. Or, to be more accurate, Jake Marshall stole it. So Detective Goodman filed out, filled out a lost item report. He would have had to give that report to the chief of police. <laughs> yeah, you're in the position of the report. Which means you can't be sure if he filed it. He filed it. How do I know, you ask? Because he needed to enter the evidence room that day. He needed to? Yes, to transfer the evidence out. Oh. Detective Goodman took the form to you, Chief Gant. Then, you accompanied the detective to the evidence room. I accompanied him? There's no other way the murderer and Detective Goodman could have entered the room. Hold on. Let me guess what you're going to say next. I, the chief of police, murdered poor Goodman. <laughs> exactly. But wait, there's more. The chief didn't necessarily need to accompany him to the evidence room. He could have just lent him his ID card. <laughs> yes. Now that you mention it, I believe I might have done something of that sort. Objection! Sorry, but that's not possible. <laughs> According to the record, your card was only used once. Yet, you showed us your ID card earlier. If you had really lent it to Detective Gunman, it would have been found on his body. <laughs> no! Chief Gant, you did it! <laughs> The murder was most likely a spur of the moment crime, for no one in their right mind would choose the police department as a place to commit murder. After the murder, he contacted Lana at the prosecutor's office. Can't judge OTP. <laughs> oh, well, I guess Judge, I guess Uji likes them bad boys. Why? To dispose of detect Detective Goodman's body, of course. You're forgetting, Mr. Wright, that the victim's body was discovered in the prosecutor's op office's parking lot. How did he manage to move it there? I was at the police department the entire day, you know. And everyone, everyone's aware that Lana stayed at the prosecutor's office after the ceremony. Everyone except me, it seems. Still, you're the chief of police. You have an entire police force at your disposal. Oh, so you think I just ordered an officer to do it? Hey, you, take this here dead body over to the prosecutor's office. I don't think so. Chief Gant, you left all the evidence we need to prove how you moved the body of the, how you moved the body to the prosecutor's office. And all this time, I thought it was a useless clue just taking up space. How could the chief have moved the body? Mr. Wright, show us this evidence! To move the victim's body, Chief can't use this. He used this, remember? Because he called Edgeworth, and it was found in Ed and the body was found in Edgeworth's car. This is how he moved Detective Goodman's body. What's that? A screwdriver? But what does that have to do with this case? Mr. Edgeworth, think back to the day of the crime. What is the screwdriver doing here? It's here because... Ah! Uh, uh. I was asked to go by Chief Gant, no less. He told me he wanted, to, he wanted me to keep it here in the prosecutor's office. In any case... On the day of the stabbings, I brought this back here. After the ceremony ended that day, I didn't plan to return to the prosecutor's office, but you did, because Chief Gant asked you to. 
You mean I... I... The body was found in the trunk of Mr. Edward's car. I think it's obvious what happened. The body was moved by that car! Detective Goodman's body was carried in the trunk of Mr. Edgeworth's car. Yes. Unless, of course, you have another explanation, Chief? Why else would you have asked Mr. Edgeworth to transport evidence from a closed case? There's no... only one possible explanation. To transport the body to your accomplice. Miss Lana Sky. Order, order, order! What is going on here? Is there no room for rebuttal to the defense's outrageous accusations? Think back to the photograph Miss Starr took at the prosecutor's office. This was not a photo of the body being stuffed into the trunk to be taken away. This was exactly the opposite. It's a, it is a photo of the body being taken from the trunk. Chief can't. Please, say something! I believe... Your time's up. My time's up? Sorry, Raito, but I'm having lunch with... I'm having lunch with the District Attorney General after this. We have to get going if we're gonna make it in time for the early bird special. But, but, the cross-examination isn't finished yet! Remember what I told you earlier? A police chief has all kinds of weapons at his disposal. Weapons? Like, the right to, te to refuse to testify. I'm invoking that right now. What? That is not a right to be casually invoked. There are certain risks to be considered. So you're going to just run away after all of this? Run away? Don't make me laugh, Morgan. I stabbed old Goodman. That's what you're saying, right? But if you had any conclusive evidence, you would have presented it by now. Well, I... You think I have not a disposal body? If so, then show your proof and get it over with. Hmm. I'll say it again, Mr. Wright. Damon Gant. is the current chief of police. This court will not tolerate any accusations against it without concrete proof. Well, Mr. Wright, y your honor, do you have any concrete proof? Proof that Chief Gant murdered Detective Goodman and made this guy dispose of his body? Do I have any concrete proof? <sighs> Unfortunately, I don't think we do. It's no use showing evidence I'm not even sure of myself. No, Your Honor. At present, I have no conclusive evidence. Hmm. See ya, G. In that case, this court is forced to penalize you for your allegations against the Chief. What? Here's a tip. Never gamble what you can't afford to lose, Raito. It seems that Lady Luck was on my side again today. Okay, Aji, I'll leave the rest to you. Oh, thank you so much for the follow, uh, Turnabout J. Objection! <laughs> yep, objection. I warned you earlier, Mr. Wright. This is an affront to the senior officer in our nation's law enforcement agency. <laughs> what? Lady Luck. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should have a war with her. Mr. Edgeworth, what do you mean? There is one lady who knows the real truth behind this trial. We haven't yet had the honor of hearing her testimony. A lady who knows the truth. Another witness. No. In the absence of conclusive evidence, the only other method of proof is testimony. But Chief Gan has invoked his right to refuse to testify. There's still someone else. One more witness who can answer all the questions raised in this trial. Someone right in this very room. Mr. Edgeworth, who is this person? Hmm. Why are you asking me, Your Honor? Have you forgotten? The 
defense is the one calling witnesses today. Mr. Wright, does such a witness exist? She may, she may not be willing to tell the truth. But we can't just stop now. Yes, Your Honor. Defense calls forth... Lana. The defendant? Miss Lana Sky? She was in the underground parking lot at 5.15 p.m. on February 21st. Her task? To dispose of the victim's body. In accordance with a certain someone's orders. Hmm. Mr. Edgeworth? The prosecution has no objections, Your Honor. Very well. The court will now take its final recess for the day. In 15 minutes, we will reconvene to hear the defendant's testimony. This court will now re- Hold on! Huh? Hold on! Chief Gant, I thought you were going to eat! Listen good, Lana. He's talking to Lana. I don't think you need me to tell you this, but if you accept Mr. Bright's claims, there will be terrible consequences. <laughs> That's right. Your sister will be found guilty for Neil Marshall's murder. Ah, uh, this isn't good. Of course, you'd never support such an outrageous claim anyway, right? Just something to think about. Alright then, I've got a lunch date to meet. Uh... Okay, if there aren't any further objections, this court is now in recess. Looks like we managed to stay in the game. Yeah, thanks to your help, Edgeworth. That chief, he's something else, eh, pals? Detective Gumshoe! Ha 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 ha. I'm not a detective anymore. Oh yeah, sorry about that. Ah, don't worry, I've already decided where to work now. At your office! My office? Sure. I'll take the place of that top naughty girl you used to work with. Could he be me? Could he be... Maya? Still, looks like we're all out of moves now. Chief Gant's done it again. How is it he always gets the upper hand? It's not fair he has the right to refuse to testify. Hmm. Settle down, right? Remember what the judge said? But Chief, that is not a right to be casually invoked. There are certain risks to be considered. Risk? What did he mean by that? It's simple. If the Chief refuses to testify, the opposite also holds true. He, he, force it, he forfeits his right to say anything too. Emma, are you okay? Yeah, when I came to, I was in the medical. I was in the medical office. I've been listening to the trial from the gallery. So she heard everything that's been going on. Um, Emma. I'm sorry for what I said before. No, don't be. It was the truth. You know, it's funny. I almost feel somehow... Relieved. Relieved? Yeah. Now I finally know what really happened. To think all that all this time... My sister was being blacked out by that terrible man. And she did it all just to protect me. Ever since her appointment as chief prosecutor, everyone who knew her said she changed. Perhaps it was easier that way for her. What do you mean? What do you think I mean? To follow Chief Gant's orders. She must have shut herself up and deep inside. To force herself to do anything and everything the chief told her to do. That must be why she became so cold. It was all my it's all because I... I murdered Mr. Marshall. Hey, don't go blaming yourself now. If you want to blame anyone, blame society, pal. Chief Gant may be able to fool everyone else with his forgery. But he can't fool my memory. I remember now. 
I knocked Mr. Marshall into that armor. I... I see. Well, you better get back. It's time for the final act. Emma, why don't you wait here? No, I'm going with you. Uh, I want to be there. Then Lana tells the truth. Let's go, right? It's time to end this. Yes, we're saving it. <laughs> now then, will the defendant Miss Lana Sky please take the stand? Miss Lana Sky, you are the chief prosecutor. I'm sure you're aware of what is required of you. But Mr. Edward, you already know everything. You know all that I've done in these past two years. Please provide the court with your testimony, Miss Skye. And remember, you're under oath. You want to hear the truth. Of course. Lana, no matter what happens, I'll always be your sister. Now then, your testimony, if you will. First, tell us about your relationship with Chief Gant. Everything hinges on your testimony. You're the only chance we have to get Gant. I've worked alongside Gant for years. There's no truth to this blackmail theory. I fabricated the evidence two years ago all by myself. When I found Prosecutor Marshall's body, I rearranged the crime scene. My only motivation was to get Dark convicted. It had nothing to do with Emma. Hmm. Are you sure about this testimony? Your Honor, I'm confessing to a capital offense. Of course, I'm sure. But Lana! If this is true, then that means Chief Kent has nothing to do with this. That's what I've been trying to tell you from the beginning. Please, Mr. Wright, you've got to help her. She's sacrificing herself because of me. But what if she's telling the truth? She's not. I know my own sister. Whenever she speaks stiffly like that, she's hiding something inside. Deep down, she's really screaming in agony. Uh, yeah, it's no time to start second-guessing myself. The defense may not begin its cross-examination. All right. Here we go. Explain. You say you did this all by yourself? Yes. Would you mind telling us what you found when you arrived at the crime scene? It seems I was the first person to discover the scene. The broken prosecutor wore a knife was stuck in the victim's body. What? But Prosecutor Marshall died from an unfortunate accident. That's only a situation you dreamed was possible. Uh, the reality is, it wasn't my sister who took the prosecutor's life. Fantasize all you want, Mr. Wright, but I'll never change his statement. You mean, Prosecutor Marshall wound up being killed by Dark? Something like that. If that is so, what happened to the other murder weapon? Dark was carrying a switchblade knife. Oh, that was lying on the floor a little distance away. It was probably knocked away in the struggle. That's not how it went down. She's trying to cover her up for lies with more lies. All to just protect me. 
So when you found the scene like this, what did you do? After all, this is what everything boils down to. Yes. I broke off the tip of Dark's knife, planted it inside the wound, and then moved the body. But you have to be kind of precise on that. You planted the tip of Dark's knife in the victim's womb, and then you moved the body? But why? Why would you do that? You of all people should know, Edward. You've always had a good head on your shoulders. <laughs> My head isn't that bad. But maybe I'd have asked you for the sake of... Let's see... Why did you move the body? When you showed up on the scene, where exactly was the victim's body? It was where you seduced it was. By Chief Gant's dust. But the body was found by your dust. Why did you move it there? The reason for that is simple. Let's have the witness explain this in more detail. The reason Miss Sky moved the body. Pieces of the jar that shattered during the events threatened my plan. But wait, is it because of... Miss Sky, I understand how you feel. You committed that crime two years ago to protect your sister. You mean the forgery at the scene where Neil Marshall was murdered? If that truth were to be exposed now, the past two years of your life will have been in vain. Even so, I am compelled to, I am compelled to bring to everyone's attention a significant contradiction with your testimony. A contradiction? In my testimony? You testified, and I quote, Pieces of the jar that shattered during the events threatened my plan. That's right. Do you have a problem with that? It's a simple oversight, really. You see, a message was written on the on this jar with the victim's blood. Yes, the prosecutor must have written it in his final moments. Exactly so. And this is where the contradiction lies. <laughs> In order for the victim to be able to write his message on the jar, it must, have, it must not yet have been broken before he died. Uh, he couldn't have written Emma's name on a shattered jar. Order, order! Your Honor, it would appear more information is needed in regard to this jar and this bloody message. We may be missing something critical here. Something critical? Chief Prosecutor. It, it seems that it seems you're in the dark as we are. About the truth towards which we're headed. What? Just tell us exactly what you saw. We'll piece together the information to arrive at the truth. Very well. The witness may now continue her testimony. Hold on, let me just take a slight water break. Okay. I immediately noticed the blood traces on the jar. But it was dark in the room and I didn't have time to check it out. To be safe, I wiped away the blood. The fragments were large, so I'm sure I got them all. All I could think about was wiping them clean before they were discovered. You mean, you were the one who wiped away the message in blood? I wasn't chief prosecutor at the time. She didn't think Dark was the real murderer. That's why she tried to erase her real evidence, the real evidence. Very well, the defense may now begin its cross-examination. Okay. Uh, are you sure about that? Because I don't think you got them all, Lana. I must have missed it. Yep, it's right here in front of my face. 
Miss Sky, I believe this jar conceals the truth even you were unaware of. What? We found the final piece of this jar in Chief Gans's safe. In the Chief's safe? But how? I knew it. She really didn't know. There's something even more disturbing about that final piece. There was... still blood on it. But the witness just testified that she gathered every last piece and wiped the blood off of them. Yes, which leaves us with only one explanation. On the night of Prosecutor Marshall's... On the night Prosecutor Marshall was murdered, you were not the first one to show up at the, on the scene. Chief Kent got there before you. Couldn't the defendant simply have missed a piece? I'm afraid that's unlikely. The pieces are too big for anyone to miss, let alone an ace detective. Well, that may well that may well be, but everyone makes mistakes. Even I, I even I once wasted an entire day looking for my dentures. They were in my mouth all along. Huh? Can you believe that? Have you forgotten, Your Honor? When this witness arrived at the scene, the jar was already broken. Oh, that. There's no way a name could have been written on the shattered jar. Another person discovered the scene prior to the witness. How old is he? He's, he's, uh, he's permanent old. He was born to be a judge. <laughs> I hope you're not implying this person was cheap gap. At the time, he was looking for dark downstairs. Besides, even if he was there first, why would he break the jar? The question is, if he did it right there first, why did he hide the fact that fact for two years? <laughs> well, Your Honor, can you answer us that? No. 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 Why is Edgy like this? Wait, I'm not- I'm not the one on trial here. Dan and Gant arrived at the scene- the crime scene prior to the witness. He proceeded to break the jar. And purposely hid one of the broken pieces. Question. What is this action called? Fabrication of evidence. But, but why would G. Grant do that? In the light of what happened afterwards, isn't it clear? What happened afterwards? Discovering the scene, Lana Sky believed her sister Emma killed the victim. Determined to help her sister, she sought Gant's aid. So in love with Gant that he doesn't want to admit he's doing crimes. Exactly! Like I said, you know, he, well, he likes those bad boys. Lending her his aid, Gant helped her create evidence that incriminated Dark, sparing Emma. And therein lies the reason. The reason why Emma Miss Sky became the chief's puppet. Ow. Uh, uh, no, I, I did it on my own. Please, sis, stop trying to protect this chief. I, I can't watch you suffer anymore for my sake. No, you didn't. It wasn't you, Emma. You didn't kill anyone. Don't believe anything Mr. Wright says. Defense attorneys make up the most foul lies to defend their clients. Foul lies? Imagine that. Coming from my own client. Hmm. I guess you do seem like the t you do seem the type who likes to twist the truth. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. What if we're still smack dab in the middle of Gant's trap? Is something wrong, Mr. Wright? Lana? Maybe right after all. Uh, what do you mean, right? So you do tell foul lies then, Mr. Wright. Miss Skye, please testify once more. But if evidence was fabricated behind your back, then Emma's accidental killing of prosecuting Marshall might also be a lie. But, but, I do remember knocking over Mr. Marshall. Miss Skye, if you will. 
I... I can't... There's nothing to be afraid of anymore. <laughs> this cross-examination may not change a thing. However, there is a possibility that it will. If you tell the truth. Very well. I'll testify. About what I really saw. Alright. The witness may testify once more for the final time. When I arrived, I found Mr. Marshall's body impaled on that suit of armor sword. Emma and Dark were lying unconscious on the floor nearby. I saw what happened, what had happened. I thought she did it. That's why I erased all the evidence. That's why I erased all the evidence that linked her to the blood. I had cheated. Can't help me remove the body from the sword and carry it. But if it all really was a fabrication, Emma might be innocent! Unbelievable! The body was impaled on the sword armor sword? You were the only one who saw that. If only you had proof. Actually, I do have proof. I gave it to Mr. Wright just this morning. What? To me? It's a picture I took of the crime scene as I encountered it. I thought it might be needed. But I don't remember receiving a picture like that. Lana must have known. See, Mr. Wright, she really does have faith in you. Does she, though? Very well, Mr. Wright. Please present this picture. I don't remember receiving any picture from Lana. Lana said that she gave it to you this morning, right? I seem to remember getting something from her then. Let's check that evidence again. There must be a picture in there somewhere. Oh, I know. You gotta check it. Oh, there it is. Hey, there's a picture here. This is the actual crime scene. No other detective saw the crime scene like this. Because I contacted criminal affairs only after I had rearranged everything. <gasps> Mr. Wright! That piece cut out from his vest. Could that be the cloth that we found inside Chief Gant's safe? What's this? This is a handprint, isn't it? That cloth. It had fingerprints on it. Who's ever, who's, who's ever fingerprints those, those are must be the real murderer. What? But those fingerprints, they're yours, Emma. Why are your lips turning all purple, Mr. Wright? Anyway, let's get on with the cross examination. So long as you tell the truth, we should be able to flush out the real murderer. Very well. The defense may now begin its cross-examination. When I arrive, okay. Wait. What the fuck? Can he do that? Come on now, Uji. This is the poorest excuse for a trial I've ever seen. Chief Gant? What, now you want to make me as the bad guy too? If so... I like... I like to put in a word or two in my defense. He's back! Get your gun out, Ash! Just make it out already. <laughs> I'm afraid it's too late for that. What? You've already declined to testify. That means you forfeited your right to make statements of any sort. <laughs> this must be that risk we were talking about earlier. Just sit back, relax, and enjoy the sound of the noose tightening around your own neck. Uh, 
<laughs> ah, so what? Do you think I'm worried? <laughs> Sorry to disappoint you. But I don't need to make any statements. What do you mean? The evidence would do all the talking for me. Even if I can't testify, I can still present evidence. Yes, that's true. Wait, you mean you still have some conclusive evidence? No, I don't. But someone does. Someone? So, what's your excuse, Rido? Why have you been keeping quiet about it? You do have something to show us, right? Something that proves that who knocked over Neil Marshall, causing his death? Conclusive evidence that leaves no room for doubt? Is this true, Mr. Wright? If I show that piece of evidence now, it was sure to be made out as the murderer. Mr. Wright, if you have any more evidence, present it now. And if you try to conceal anything, you will be the one appearing before the Board of Inquiries. What do I do now? I better think this through carefully. I can't afford to wrong, make the wrong decision. Should I present the piece of that evidence? The one that showed who really killed Prosper Prosecutor Marshall? No. We actually can't. Your Honor, I don't have any evidence that I could present at this point in time. What? You lie! Chief Gant? You. You opened my safe. I know you took what was inside. The conclusive evidence! I don't know what you're talking about. Mr. Wright, why didn't you show them? We found it together. Oh, I see. It's because you know the truth, don't you? You know whose fingerprints are on it. That's why you won't present it. What are you talking about, Chief Gant? Can't you figure it out? Take a good look at this picture. See the victim's vest? Notice anything odd about the chest area? It looks like part of it's been cut out for some reason. You mean you have this? And you're safe? What? That means you, the chief of police, have been concealing evidence. This is going to be the biggest scandal in the history of the police department. I don't think it's the biggest scandal, but go off, Aji. I'm impressive. To be honest, I didn't think you had the gall, Rido. Well, everybody's going to jail. Well, I can't just let you pin me up as a murderer. I'll tell you what really happened. What? You mean you admit to it? I was the first person to arrive at the crime scene that day. It then occurred to me that I could use the situation to control Lana. So you really were manipulating her! I knew Lana. If I made her look like the blame lay with her sister, that when she saw the scene, she would ask me for my aid. So you assisted this guy. I told her to arrange all the evidence. I had her plant the knife tip in the victim's body and move the body across the room. And I ended up using that evidence to get Joe Dark convicted. When I tampered with the crime scene, I hid two pieces of evidence. This was before Lana arrived at the scene, mind you. Two pieces of evidence. You mean those items are your safe? But why? For insurance, of course. Insurance? I was sure my plan would work, but it's always best to be prepared for the worst. I wasn't about to let anyone blame me for a murder that girl committed. You mean you were calculating that far ahead while forging evidence? What do you take me for? A fool? I didn't make police chief by dumb luck. See this jar fragment? I hit the most legible part of Emma's name. I didn't expect Lana to go and wipe the blood off all, off all the pieces. But if you fabricated all the evidence, what's to say you didn't fabricate the message on this jar too? 
Ho, 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 ho. Some people just don't know when to quit, do they? That's why I kept one more item for insurance. You mean that piece of cloth? Come on now, Rido. Cough it up already. I know you have it. What are you waiting for, Mr. Wright? So you admit to it then, Chief Gant, that you were hiding the cloth that you cut off the victim's vest in your safe. Yes, I admit it. I didn't want to have a I I didn't want to have to do with that. I didn't want to have to do that, being chief and all. But it's a lot better than being portrayed as a murderer. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you have to say for yourself? Just a moment ago, you said you didn't have any evidence that you could present. Foolish move, Ryo. You should have shown it before it was too late. It's been a long battle. But the moment of truth has finally arrived. As long as I don't mess up here, victory is mine. Your Honor, I do have evidence to present now. Alright then, let's see this conclusive evidence. The evidence that shows who actually murdered Prosecutor Marshall. Whew. I believe in you, Emma. We believe in you, Emma. Let me verify this once more. On the day of the crime, you personally cut out this piece of piece of the victim's vest? Oh, yes. At last, he finally brought it out into the open. There's a handprint on this piece of cloth. Your Honor, the prosecution requests that it be, that be immediately sent to the lab for analysis. This handprint on the leather. There must be a strong impact for it to be left so clearly. You mean, it could not have been forged. It must be authentic, conclusive evidence. Ho ho ho. You're as slow on the uptake as ever, worthy. What? Think about it. Raido had it all this time to present this evidence. Yet he was reluctant to do so. Why would that be? You mean you already know? You know whose fingerprints are on that? M Mr. Wright, do you really know? Whoever the fingerprints must belong to must be the real murderer. Whose fingerprints are they? Very well. I'll tell you. It should be okay now. Everything is proceeding as predicted. The person whom these fingerprints belong to is... We believe in you, Emma. Remember, every this is all to help you, Emma. Emma? Emma Sky? What? They're mine? I'm sorry, Emma. But why? Why didn't you tell me? All according to Keikaku. Keikaku means plan. Oh ho 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 ho! You're really something, Raido. You knew this girl did it all along. And you still tried to pin the murder on me. So it's true. Tragic but true. This girl really did shove Prosecutor Marshall to his death. How could you? You... you monster! Miss Sky. You knew whose fingerprints those were all along, yet you, you acted like she really didn't. Miss Sky, it's not over yet. What? I said this trial isn't over yet. Ha! But I'm afraid it's over, boy. Not only this trial, but your career, too. You purposely concealed this conclusive evidence. That, my friend, is a serious offense. I'm looking forward to pressing charges after the defendant is convicted. I'll have your badge, boy! What's the matter? Cat got your tongue? Aren't you going to tell us how it feels? How it feels to be the one who single-handedly turned a poor little girl into a murderer? 
before I do that, there's just one little thing I have to clear up. Oh, and what's that? Who really killed Prosecutor Neil Marshall? What? Chief Gant, you are absolutely right. This piece of cloth proves who the real murderer is. Who killed Neil Marshall, you ask? It was Emma Skye, wasn't it? I'm afraid that's not possible. You see, this piece of cloth contains a critical contradiction. What? A contradiction? What is this fool babbling about? I'm talking about a contradiction. One that proves who the real killer is. Mr. Wright, this piece of cloth, what could it possibly contradict? Chief Gant, your tyrannical ring ends here. Behold, the piece of evidence that contradicts this cloth. Remember? Look. Remember the picture that Lana took. If Emma really did kill him, Gant would have left that print on there, but he didn't. He didn't. And this is very notable. And what exactly is this supposed to be? This is the place Miss Sky the picture this is the picture Miss Sky took. Take a good look at it. See where the piece of his vest was cut out? Yes, his shirt is showing underneath. It's hard to make out with all the blood on his vest though. Exactly my point. His chest is soaked with blood. That's only natural. His lungs, no doubt, were punctured. Blood poured out of his mouth. Oh, but that piece of cloth! Notice something different about the cloth? Wait, there's no blood on it! <laughs> Since Emma Skye's fingerprints are on this cloth, there's no doubt that she shoved the prosecutor aside. However, Mr. Marshall was not impaled on the sword at that time. No, th this is nonsense. Now then, Chief Gant, let me ask you something. Prosecutor Marshall was not impaled when he was shoved aside. He most likely hit his head on the ground and was knocked out. If so, then tell me, who could it have been? Who could have arrived at the scene before Miss Lana Sky? Picked up picked up the unconscious prosecutor and impaled him on the armor sword. <laughs> then, to make it look like Emma was responsible for the prosecutor's death, said person proceeded to write her name on the jar with the victim's blood. A jar that they broke on purpose to leave behind a clue. And make Lana believe her sister did it. Remember what you admitted only moments ago? Did you personally cut out this bloodless piece of the victim's chest? Vest? Ironic, isn't it? Though the very act of creating insurance, you proved that you were the actual murderer. Or no! It's finally all over. <laughs> oh, that was close, Rhino. He almost had me. Sorry, but you'll have to do better than that. I refute all your allegations. What do you mean you refute his allegations? You see, that piece of cloth is illegal evidence. Order, order, what nonsense is this? Illegal evidence cannot be used to convict a suspect. Remember, Aji? Earlier, old Raito here concealed that piece of cloth. So then, what's your excuse, Raito? You do have some conclusive evidence, don't you? Your Honor, I don't have any evidence I can present at this point in time. But he did say at this point of time. 
Well, that's true. The defense did refuse to present evidence. At that moment, that piece of cloth ceased to be legal evidence. But that's not fair. Oh, did you actually think you could best me in court? It looks like the last lap's on you, son. I'm afraid Mr. Gant's claim is legally correct. Well, Mr. Edgeworth, true. Illegal evidence cannot be used to convict a person. Assuming, of course, that the evidence is indeed illegal. Hmm? Well, Mr. Wright? It seems, at last, the time for me to reveal my plan has finally arrived. Mr. Wright, do you admit it? That you purposely hid and illegally concealed this piece of cloth? Well, no. Technically, no, he did not. I admit, I refuse to present a one point. Aha! So the evidence is illegal! No, it isn't, Mr. Gant. Huh? It's not that I didn't present evidence then. It's that I couldn't. What do you mean, you couldn't? There are certain procedures involved in presenting evidence. Oh, I made it. No, Aji, don't listen to his lies. He's nothing but a coward. You can't really believe. There is only one issue left to be resolved in this trial. Is this evidence legal or not? Very well. Let us settle this once and for all. Earlier, you refused to present evidence. If you can prove your conduct was not in violation of the law, then do so now. Yes, we can. Because of this cute little cheeky book. This is my proof, Your Honor. Evidence law. What's this? I've done my homework too, Chief. Indeed, Emma Skye's fingerprints were on this piece of cloth. However, at that point in time, this was merely a piece of cloth, nothing more. What? You see, it's written right here in this book. The second rule of evidence law. <laughs> Rule number one, no evidence shall be shown without the approval of the, of the police department. I found this piece of evidence myself inside your safe. It goes without saying that I did not have the approval from the police department. Rule two, unregistered evidence presented must be relevant to the case on trial. And here is the crux of the matter. You see, at the time, it was impossible for me to prove the re relevance between the cloth and the SL9 incident. What? What kind of nonsense is this? You want relevancy? Just take one look at this picture and... Sorry, but can you recall, when was that last pic- when was that picture presented? That was shown only a few moments ago. No. He's right. At the beginning of today's trial, that piece of cloth was still meaningless. The person who gave it, the person who gave gave its value as evidence was you, David Gant. Urgh. You yourself confess to a certain truth. Let me verify this once more. On the day of the crime, you personally cut out this piece of the victim's chest. Oh yes. No. It was then that you approved this cloth as conclusive evidence. Yes, you, the chief of police, personally approved this cloth. The only person who could have cut from cut this from the victim's vest is the one who stood before Prosecutor Marshall in his final moments. In other words, the real murderer, and there's only one person who who that could be. Damon Gant, the killer was you!
I knew I should have gotten rid of him. That good for nothing scum. For two years he's been stooping around the department, trying to get something on me. Crimes are being committed are being committed every day. Yet he insisted on hounding me. Well, your crime wasn't exactly petty. He wanted to reinvestigate the case. He recruited Angel Star, then convinced Bruce Goodman. Detective Goodman? Yeah, that's right. If the evidence is trans if the evidence is transferred, I'll lose my only chance to find out the truth. Please, you've got to help me. Goodman turned him down, as he often. Still, Jake Marshall didn't know when to quit. He stole Goodman's ID card and tried to take the evidence. Goodman came to me that day. He wanted to file a lost item report. I went with him to the evidence room. And then all of a sudden, he decided to speak out! What are you talking about, Goodman? Can you, can you please reopen the investigation, Chief? We can't transfer the evidence out. There are too many questions left unanswered. He opened his evidence locker, and as he was taking the evidence out, he said, It's not too late. I'm gonna hand all this, hand all this over to Marshall. Well, to be honest, I was a bit taken aback by his words. I had a bad feeling when he came to see me, but I never thought he'd bring up SL9. That's what I saw, that accursed knife. Press F in the chat for Bruce Goodman. He was a good man. I couldn't just pull it out. Doing so would have led to more blood, making it near impossible to hide your crime. Even so, the blood was just pouring out. I didn't know who might stumble in, so I hurried to wipe it up. I was worried so much before I didn't realize my fatal mistake. The bloody handprint. On the, det on the detective Gumshoe's locker. I used to be known as the crime computer. But everyone has to start somewhere, I guess. I was too nervous. I had no business doing any of it. Then you put the body in my car? I'm sorry, I couldn't- I'm sorry, I couldn't think of any other way to move the body. I broke your trunk, but what's the big deal? You make a lot more than us detectives ever will. So we have confirmation about the- about payments, about- uh, not payments, about salaries. L leaving the prosecution's car aside, how? How could you get Miss Sky involved with all of this? Who well, she has had she had as much to lose as I did if the truth came out. So you took the evidence from Detective Goodman's locker. I felt bad for having to do it. I also didn't have time to pick and choose what to take. So you left the jar fragments and the glove. Yeah, it looked like I was better off being an investigator of crimes than a committer. They all did their best to get in my way. I've got to hand it to them. They do their jobs well, much to my dismay. Fake evidence doesn't hold up very well upon close examination. You must have known that. Tell me, words. Why do you stand in court? Me? You despise criminals. I can feel it. You and me? We're the same. <sighs> one day you'll understand. Oh, believe me, you will. You're just one man. You'll see what it really takes to bring them down once you try to go it alone. But he won't be alone because he got Gumshoe. He got Feeny. He has everybody. Well, looks like time to say goodbye. Oh, Aji. What? 
Looks like we'll have to cancel that lunch date. <laughs> sorry, old friend. I'm sorry too, Dana Gant. I knew you. I knew you as you used to be long ago. You were once a fine investigator and, ex and an example to others in the force. I'm sorry to learn that you are no longer that person. Those days are gone, Elegy. Thanks for all the memories, though. Confirmed. Yes, we are confirming! <laughs> Don't worry, you'll be fine. Now you have Raito here. And Worthy. With these two around, you can't go wrong. In fact, I can hear them already. The melodious sound of a new beginning. There are two things I want you to understand. Yes. First, your sister never hurt anyone. Second, Dame again betrayed you from the beginning. You see, Miss Sky, you no longer have any reason to keep silent. This reads exactly like a breakup letter. I'm screaming. <laughs> Press F in the chat for the Uji for Uji's and, and Damon Gant's relationship. <laughs> You're right. When this trial is over, I'll tell everything. All that I've done these past two years. From the time I had Gant help me to forge, forge evidence up until today. So, it seems all the questions raised in this trial have been answered. I'm sorry, Miss Sky. I couldn't get you out of all your all your trouble. My my, what high standards you have for a rookie! Oh, I can see why Mia thought so highly of you. Who knows? A few years from now, you just might make it to the top. Oh, she's smiling. We did it. I owe you my thanks, Mr. Wright. Miss Sky, and to you too, Mr. Edgeworth. You suffered every bit as much as I have over these past few days. Believe me, I know how much of an ordeal it's been for you. Hm, it, it was nothing. Liar. I was worried that the pressure might bring you, and yet, you rose above it all and guided Mr. Wright to victory. You've done well, Mr. Edgeworth. So stop it! I only did my job! Oh, edg edgy. In, this, in light of this case, it seems that a, it seems a good self-examining is in, in order for all of us. Miss Skye? Yes, Your Honor. You're an innocent of murder, however... Though although the chief blackmailed you, the fact is you still acted as his accomplice. A trial will be scheduled for these crimes at a later date. Yes. I understand, Your Honor. Is there something amusing about all of this? Why are you smiling? It's been a long time, Your Honor. A long time since I felt free of these heavy chains. Oh, baby. I, oh, this case gets me so emotional because... This never would have. This never should have happened. Neil never should have died, and all you know, Gant never should have blackmailed her, and all of this. Well, this trial has gone on far too long already. Regarding the charge of murder, this court finds the defendant, Miss Lana Sky, not guilty. Yay! Confetti in the courtroom. Betty in the courtroom! We did it! She's out! Well, at least from that crime. That is all. This court is adjourned. <laughs> At long last, it's finally over. I Emma? Why the long face? I'm sorry your sister didn't get completely off the hook, but at least she wasn't convicted for a murder she didn't commit. No, that's not it. Just now, after the trial ended, I could see why Mia Faye thought so highly of you. I owe you my things, Mr. Wright. 
And to you too, Mr. Edgeworth. You've suffered every bit as much as I have over these past few days. You've done well. You know, I did my best too. But Hannah didn't say a single word to me. Hope I'm not interrupting anything, pals. Oh, guess I am. I'll come back later. <laughs> Again, for the third time. Wait, Detective Gumshoe, what is it? You're doing this on purpose, aren't you? Making a detective run around all around while on duty? And to top it at all, to top it off, you called me here. I've seen happier people at funerals. Hey, lighten up, pals. I'm only kidding. Oh, are you here because of my sister again? Nope, not this time. I came today because of you, pal. Mm -hmm. That's right. I thought you'd like to see someone. Oh, Mahana. Should she be doing this? She's still under arrest, you know. Uh, well, I won't tell if you won't. Emma, I owe you an apology. It's okay, sis. Don't worry about it. That day, two years ago... Uh, it was the first time in my life I ever panicked. It was all I could do to keep myself from screaming. All I could think about was keeping you from getting wrapped up in that mess. <laughs> Sis, I asked you to help me cover up the truth. I thought I was doing it for your sake. But now, I realize I was wrong. I changed after that day. I had to. It was the only way I could make it through the past two years. I knew, I know how much I was hurting you by distancing myself. But I couldn't bring myself to tell you what I did. I, I was scared. Scared that you look, look at me with those eyes of yours. I was scared of how you'd react if you knew. But sis, you were only doing it for me. No. Huh? I turned my back on you that day. And hiding what I believed to be the truth, I was deceiving you. Sis, I'm such a fool. It took me all this time to realize that. Emma, I'm so sorry. But sis, you don't have to apologize. I'm happy now. You're happy? Of course! You know, sis, I always knew that one day you'd come back, and now you have! Oh, Emma, Emma! Oh, I'm getting, I'm getting all teary out again! Oh, they're so cute! No one can change the past. The only one we can do is strive to make up for our mistakes. Why must we make up for our mistakes, you ask? Because in, do in so doing, we can find a way to we can find the way back to our rightful path. It is it is from there that we can move on toward a brighter future. Got it. <laughs> At least that's what I felt watching the two sisters make up. Mr. Wright. Mr. Gumshoe, M me Thank you both for all that you've done. I'm sure we'll meet again someday. Isn't that right, Edgeworth? Edgeworth? Stop hiding and come over here. <laughs> Can you imagine Edgeworth just kind of like hiding in, in like behind a plant or something? He just kind of like, mm. <laughs> gee. Where was he hiding? I just came to say congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. Right. Well, I'll be going now. Mr. Edgeworth, 
I hope you don't blame yourself for what happened. We <laughs> were the ones who acted corruptly, not you. It's too late for me. <laughs> no matter what anyone may say, I realize today that I can't correct my, my mistakes. Not only that, but I don't even trust myself anymore. Chief Gant was right. <laughs> you despise criminals. I can feel it. You and me, we're the same. <laughs> one day, you'll understand. Oh, believe me, you will. You're just one man. You'll see what it really takes to bring them down once you try to go in alone. I do despise criminals. I plan to dedicate my entire life to fighting them. But in order to fight crime on my own, I needed a weapon. It's scary, but I've known that to be true for quite some time now. But Edward... Who knows? Who knows? Given enough time, I might have, might have tried to pull something like Chief Gat did. That thought terrifies me. That's why I can't continue on as a prosecutor. Edgeworth, don't you understand? Damon Gant and your mentor, Manfred von Karma, were both the best of the best when it came to fighting crime. But they both made the same mistake. You said in order to fight crime on my own, I need a weapon. That may be true, but think back to today's trial. You weren't alone. <laughs> you were working together with Mr. Wright. And because of that partnership, you were able to present evidence that otherwise could have gone undiscovered. Isn't that right, Mr. Wright? Huh? What? Oh, uh, uh, yeah. What is this, a pop quiz? Come on, Mr. Wright. Show him what Lana was talking about. Evidence, huh? Something that neither Edgeworth nor I would have been able to find our own. Oh! I think I know what it is. That's... That's the picture I drew! Our counterattack began with this. You had one half of the evidence list and I had the other. Apart, we wouldn't have been able to completely restore Emma's picture. That didn't... That didn't just happen by chance, Mr. Edgeworth. Ugh. It's time for me to go. Mr. Edgeworth? If you'll excuse me, there are still some loose ends that need wrapping up. Take care, Chief Prosecutor. Edgeworth, what will you do now? Well, whatever, well, whatever you do, just remember... You can let what happened kill the prosecutor in you, or you can help let it help you grow. In the end, it's up to you. I know. It seems I owe you my thanks too, right? But what I face now is my problem. Edgeworth. I'll be waiting for you in court. Farewell. I'd better be clean too. Okay, but I'll be by I'll be by to visit soon. It seems we both have a lot to learn and catching up to do. Here, this is a little something for you. Scientific investigation. It's the first book I ever bought. Study it well. Thanks, sis, I will. His unnecessary feeling. And so another case came to a close. As for the sisters, I have faith. Faith that their lives have only just begun. And as for me, I think it's time I started on a new journey of my own. A journey to rediscover myself. Well, don't go checking out just yet, pal.
Huh? What is it, detective? There's just a little matter to be resolved about the chief prosecutor. You see, she isn't supposed to be out of jail like this. But... I thought you said it was okay. Yeah, well, it may be okay with me, but the folks at the prison are a different story. Huh? Basically, I had to bribe a guard in, in order to sneak her out for 30 minutes. Believe me, it wasn't cheap either. Huh? Way to go, detective! I didn't know you had a wild side! Yeah, well, haha. <laughs> you see, Mr. Right here is the one who will be footing the bill. Huh? Huh? What, you think I could afford him a nice salary? You gotta be kidding me, pal! Huh? 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 Thank you, Mr. Wright! You're the best! <laughs> Why is it... I suddenly feel like I want to scream? Hey, I got an idea! Why don't we go all go pay it off together? Yeah, that's a great idea! Come on, guys! Let's go! <laughs> He's like, wait a minute! <laughs> Oh my god, we did it! We finished the first game of Phoenix Wright. I arranged for a friend of mine in Europe to take care of Emma. I hope she'll be pleased to study under a top coroner. As for me, this affair has pretty much ended my days as the pro at the prosecutor's office. Still, I'll manage to find my way back to the, to the field somehow, then I'll be able to investigate crimes together with Emma. This game. But what do you think, Ash? What do you think of the game? The ending? Of all this drama? Yikes! I thought I was a goner for a moment there. In the end, though. They overlooked my unauthorized investigation of the chief's office. If we penalized you anymore, it'd be worse than firing you. Yep, that's what they said. It just goes to show... You can't shake me off that easily. Oh, Gumshoe. Sweet, precious baby Gumshoe. <laughs> good, good, good game. Everyone's going to jail. You said you haven't finished uh, Justice for All, have you? Uh, Ash? I know you haven't played the third game, but... My new mission is to guard the main entrance and take care of Billy! Can you believe it? I've been demoted to a security guard! My partner is keeping an eye on the entrance for me today. I'll show them though! Someday I'm gonna be detective! Yes sir! Then I could just be like that dead gumshoe! Oh... Weekends. Oh, there's the Boo Badger still dancing. Okay, you haven't played the second game. Oh, press F in the chat for the Boo Badger. So, the second game, you're gonna be completely blind then, huh? Excellent. So, you better be here when I start playing it next year. Because, uh, I'm gonna be on a break. For a bit. What is it? Can't you see? I'm having me a showdown with the Miss Star Man. She sneaks state this on me. She's seeing one of the gods to see. Well, cowboy, it looks like you did it. You and the gay band beat it back her smile. Can you make sure Billy and the gay get their water? Yeah, I know. Rest in pepperoni, blue badger. Good. There's your wife! Looks like we'll be seeing each other for a while. As a farewell gift, I put in a new meal on the menu, the right way lunch menu. The top layer tastes as bitter as defeat, but on the bottom is layered the sweetest victory. Kim seemed to do the turnaround thing. It's a hot seller. Just make sure not to eat it backwards. Couldn't read it fast enough. Oops. But there is your wife.
I'll never forget what that young defense lawyer said after the trial. Let's see, what was his name again? Mr. Left? Anyway, he said he's been doing er something or other for uh, how many years? Well, anyway, I've got another trial to get to, so I better be... Huh? Oh no, I forgot my gavel. Sorry, gotta go. You will eat her food one day, Ash. You will eat your wife's food. Oh, I do. Ah! Ah, Nothing soothes the soul like fresh country air. Still, sometimes I do miss hearing you and your objection. Still, I can't go back into my full-fledged spirit medium. Mystic Maya! Afternoon training's about to begin! Coming! Well, see you around, Nick. Maya... Ugh. All these stories are so sad and they always like get to me. I just love the series so much. I cannot wait to start the second game. So what are your expectations for the next game, Ash? Mr. Edgeworth. Uh, Mr. Edgeworth? I brought you your tea. Oh, what's going on? Is that his letter of resignation? Thanks for coming to see me off. I can't believe I'm going to Europe. Thank you, Mr. Wright. Thank you so much for everything. I'm a little sad, but I'll be alright. Whenever I want to see Lana, all I have to do is open this book. Oh. Yeah, you're expecting at least one new wife? Okay, that's, that's fair. That is fair. Well, there's one more thing we gotta look at. What is this? Y'all, I'm crying in the club. I'm crying in the club. Oh, they're so... Uh, I love them so much. We did it! We did it! So right now we're saving it. <laughs> so, next time, next year, we are, uh, um, we're gonna start the second game. Give my voice a chance to rest. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, just kind of relax for the holidays, all that fun stuff. I hope you guys have a uh, happy holidays. I hope you guys stay safe, stay warm, stay hydrated, stay you. Alright, tomorrow, or not tomorrow, but my point, my point, my point, I just want you to know that I appreciate every single one of you for joining me thus far. And if you're watching this co-currently, you can just skip this last part and just head on to the next video, so. Bye, I love you guys so much, you guys are so wonderful. If it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't be here. And, again, this game seem, means so much to me, so it's very... And it means even more to me now because I get to share it with you guys. So, again, I love you all so much. Happy holidays. Please, 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 for the love of God, stay safe. Please, 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 for the love of God, social distance if you, if you can, okay? Like, we're still in a, ba in, in a pandemic. So, again, I love you guys so, 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 so much. 